We're good. Okay, good evening, everybody. We will begin tonight's meeting. If everyone can please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we could all please just bow our heads in a moment of silence as we continue to pray for all those impacted in the country of Ukraine. We can also keep in our thoughts and prayers uh, all of our first responders, our police officers, our firefighters, our EMTs. We can also keep in our thoughts and prayers, of course, uh, the brave men and women serving overseas, protecting our freedoms and protecting our nation. And tonight we say a special prayer for Yorktown resident, Lenny Tosta, who passed away uh, earlier this week at the age of 100, a veteran in his own right. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to the John C. Hart Memorial Library. We'll go with introductions, starting to my right. Good evening, Diana Quas, town clerk. Hello, Tom Diana, deputy supervisor, councilman. Matt Slater, town supervisor. Ed Lackerman, councilman. Sergio Esposito, councilman. Good evening, Luciana Howitt, councilwoman. Adam Rodriguez, town attorney. And we're going to begin with a welcome from our library direct director, Yvonne Check. Yvonne? Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the John C. Hart Memorial Library. Um, as uh, Supervisor Slater just said, my name is Yvonne Check, and I'm the library director. Um, we are thrilled to have you all, uh, to have the town board holding their meeting here at the Hart Library. And I want to thank you all for being here and thank all the residents for attending. It is particularly meaningful for you all to be here today since it is actually National Library Week. Yep. And the theme this year from the American Library Association is connect with your library. And the theme promotes the idea that libraries are places that help you connect not only to books, but to technology and to your community. So of course we've always connected the people of Yorktown to books of every kind and for every age, but we now also connect Yorktown residents to technology. One of the ways we do this is through our new hotspot program, and we land these portable Wi-Fi devices free of charge. They look like this, and they come in this great kit. Oh. And Supervisor Slater well, has Well, Councilman Lackerman needed it, so. <laughs> and uh, this is so you can have internet connectivity wherever you go. So we're very proud to be able to, to provide technology and connect the community with, with technology in that way. We also have numerous digital resources that you can access directly from our website. We have everything from the useful uh, Consumer Reports magazine online so if somebody looking to buy an appliance or a car and they want to check it out in consumer magazines, instead of having to buy one, you can use your library card and access it right from our website. We also have ebooks, of course, and e-audiobooks. We also have a streaming service which is similar to Netflix, except ours is free for you to use, and all you need is your library card. You can watch movies, TV shows, right from our library website using your card, and it's our Hoopla streaming service. So those are just some of the ways that we connect you to technology. Of course, we also connect you to traditional books. Most people think that think mm. that, that means just the books we have in this building, but and this building is home to a little over 100,000 books. Uh, we can also, however, connect you with any book that you would need that is anywhere else within any of the Westchester County libraries through our uh, library consortium. So if you need a book and only White Plains Library has it, we can get that for you. Thousands of books are transported around to all the libraries in Westchester County every single day in that way. If there's a book that you would like that is outside of the Westchester County Library System, we can get it for you anywhere else in the country with a nationwide service. 
So that takes a little bit more time because we don't have a truck that will go bring it there every day, but we can get it for you. So uh, whether you are looking for something that is an obscure book and only they only carry one copy in Iowa or in Texas, we can still get it for you. And uh, they, we're also about connecting people with, of course, things that they want and need, and we are doing that through library programs. So one of the things I wanted to call your attention to is as you look around this room, you see some beautiful artwork. This room serves as a gallery for local artists to display their work, and you get one month of exhibit time to do so. We've got a waiting list at the moment. Uh, but it's, it's a great way to, uh, of course, connect with art, connect with community and local artists. And our children's librarian wanted to bring this uh, beautiful kind of idea, concept, to the children's room. So I am announcing tonight that we have dedicated, as of today, a wall in our children's room. And this exhibit is called Art at Heart. And the children's room exhibit is called Little Art at Heart. And, due to, and thanks to the friends of the library who purchased reusable uh, frames for us, we have them mounted on the wall. And your, your little artists can display their masterpieces for a month at a time in our children's room. So let us know and we'll get them on the list. Um, we have lots of children's programs going on. I can't list all of them because it would take too long. So please take a look at our website. Uh, next week we have a lot of, I, I guess school is off next week, so we've got a lot of programs going on in the children's room, including scavenger hunts, crafts, things like that. We are also showing the award-winning movie Encanto, Encanto, and that will be a week from Friday right here in this room. Bring your family to that on April 15th. Uh, we have for teens this month, and I see our poet laureate is in the audience. Uh, for teens this month, since it is also National Poetry Month, we are doing our first ever open uh, poetry open mic night on April 22nd for teens. So our friends at the library again have stepped up to help us with that, and they have purchased open mic night uh, t-shirts. So the first 10 teens that sign up to read their original poetry will get a commemorative t-shirt for that. For adults this month, we have a special program on demystifying Medicare and health care. I know a lot of people have questions about that. We have that program coming up. We have tax help, tax help with uh, free tax help for filing your taxes. So you still have a few days left to do that. And that's through AARP. And we have restarted our in-person weekly games with everything from Scrabble to Mahjong. And we're doing that three or four days a week, depending on the game. And of course, we always have book clubs as well for adults. So make sure you check our website. We have a lot of great programs. It's ever-changing. I want to give you a couple of statistics to tell you that now that we're open full uh, in our back to our full time, we are getting busier and busier and busier. And a few of the statistics will bear that out. We serve every year about, we lend about a quarter of a million items out of this building alone. Uh, our March statistics have just come in today. And in March alone, we lent 18,000 physical items out of this building, wow. out of the Yorktown Library. Wow. And then people additionally borrowed, streamed, viewed, or listened to about another 10,000 digital items just in the month of March. So again, back to the theme, we're connecting people to resources and we're doing it 24 hours a day, seven days a week because we, people have access to our website anytime they want. And that brings me finally to our staff. Our staff helps to make all of this possible. And since today is also National Library Workers Day, mm -hmm. I want to thank the library staff for everything they do every day to serve this Yorktown community. And once again, welcome to the John C. Hart Memorial Library, and thank you all for being here. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you. We appreciate uh, your hospitality. I got to say that Yvonne, since she's come in, has done a terrific, outstanding job 
She has an amazing vision for the future of this library. We are so lucky and blessed as you hear just some of the statistics uh, of, of how important this resource really is in our community. Uh, but I know that uh, under Yvonne's watch, uh, that's going to grow immensely. And so I'm very, very excited about what the future holds for uh, the John C. Hart Memorial Library. Just a couple of announcements uh, that I wanted to make sure to share. Uh, I do want to let folks know that uh, town tax bills were mailed March 31st. They are due April 30th. Several ways that uh, folks can pay if you uh, need to do so and not doing it through uh, an escrow, through your mortgage. Uh, obviously, you can pay online. That's still an option uh, right on the town's website. You can mail your checks in uh, to the town tax receiver. You can come and visit us at the town tax receiver's office on the first floor of town hall. Uh, you can also drop off checks only uh, the, to our drop box, which uh, again located behind town hall. So many, many ways for you to, uh, to pay your taxes, uh, but I do wanna make sure that everyone is aware that those notices did go out March 31st uh, and they are due April 30th. The Yorktown Police Department, and we're gonna be highlighting this uh, tomorrow morning. The Yorktown Police Department and Chief Noble always on the cutting edge when it comes to providing just great service to our community. And so they are launching uh, a first responders resident alert registry. Uh, and this is really important, I think, for, for a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of people and in a lot of ways. First off, this is a voluntary, I want a keyword there, voluntary uh, database that you have to sign yourself or your loved one up for, it's 100% uh, voluntary again. Uh, this is so first responders alert registry is in, uh, so an individual uh, who may have special needs, uh, some type of disability, uh, this way the police department is aware of it and they know about it. Uh, and again, this is all done uh, very, uh, in a very secure manner. Uh, all personal information contained in the registry will remain confidential and it's all protected according to federal HIPAA regulations. So for those who wish to sign up, can do so on the town's website, um, and you can go to yorktownny.org. Uh, there's a registry link right on the town's website, or you can visit the Yorktown Police Department. Uh, just to, again, I want to just provide a couple of examples. Parents and caregivers may enroll a person of any age with any type of medical condition or disability, including but not limited to autism, autism spectrum disorder, Alzheimer's, or dementia, bipolar disorder, and Down syndrome. Again, adults with disabilities may also enroll themselves. And this is stemming from a few things, but one of the things that we've had recent conversations with uh, Con Ed, uh, when we had our, one of our um, sit downs with them, uh, was making sure that we had better communication when it came to responding to those uh, who are, uh, have a health matter and there's no power. Um, you know, so we've been trying to work with both Con Ed and NYSEG, but one of the things that we determined uh, in that meeting, and I don't want to speak for Chief Noble, but I'm just uh, uh, surmising uh, what I think is one of the motivations here, is the fact that that uh, information is not two-way. So Con Ed may know of, uh, of a senior uh, who is home, you know, on, uh, who may require specific medical needs, but the Yorktown Police Department may not know that. Uh, and it's really important for our police department to know that. It's important for our first responders to know that. Same when our police are out dealing with members of the public. Uh, and, and if we do know, you know, someone may have some type of uh, emotional issue or, or um, you know, again, we go back to, you know, it is Autism Awareness Month, so autism. I mean, th that's a good information for our police department to know. Uh, they do a great job. Uh, dealing with all members of the public, but any information is always is always good for them to have. And so this is, a, I think, a really uh, important initiative. Uh, again, the Yorktown Police Department always on the cutting edge. Chief Noble always finding ways to engage the community and making sure that our services that the police department provide are, are at a top level. I do want to let, uh, again, remind folks, Bulk Trash is uh, back up and running for spring pickups. Uh, Section 5 is starting Monday, April 11th. I also want to remind everybody that Dan Strauss's favorite holiday is coming up, and that is the Battle of Yorktown. Right, Mr. Strauss? And that is April 23rd. Uh, and there will also be an e-waste 
uh, day, uh, also on the 23rd. So again, it, you know, uh, and I know we had to cancel on uh, one of the more, more recently because of some of the bad weather. But if you have uh, TVs, electronics, uh, anything like that, you can bring it over to uh, out in front of the Yorktown Police Department and uh, the refuse and recycling staff. Uh, we'll collect it for you. Uh, you can also bring textiles. Uh, so if you're going and you're doing some spring cleaning and you're cleaning out your closets and there's clothes there that uh, you may want to discard, you can bring that as well. Uh, and also uh, tires. If you have tires, you can bring that. There is a charge for the tires. I believe it's $5 uh, per tire. Um, uh, but uh, so again, great services provided by the town uh, for our residents. Um, Let's see. I d we did deliver, we had launched a uh, petition for residents uh, in opposition to Con Edison's proposed rate hikes. That petition was delivered to the PSC last week. I did hear from a lot of residents who are NYSEG customers. I just want to make sure everyone understands and it's clear. Con Ed is proposing an additional th uh, three-year rate hike uh, above and beyond what they currently have. NYSEG is not, uh, as of yet, uh, has not put that uh, forth to the Public Service Commission. Um, so I just want to make sure that, because Yorktown is one of only two municipalities in the entire county that has both NYSEG and Con Ed, uh, the other being the town of Bedford. So I know that there may be some confusion there. We recognize, again, uh, that everyone's utility rates have gone sky high, and so we're working on some initiatives to uh, do what we can on the local level to address that. Uh, but the PSC is in the process of, of uh, evaluating the request from Con Ed for an additional rate hike, and we had nearly a thousand uh, people sign this uh, online petition, which we were, which we did send up to the Public Service Commission. Uh, I know it was mentioned, I believe it was maybe last week or two weeks ago at this point, uh, but Yorktown did receive uh, Tree City USA status from the Arbor Day Foundation. Uh, this marks our 11th consecutive year with this uh, important designation, and I want to thank our friends over at the Tree Commission. Uh, for all their work. Uh, Larry Klein was nice enough to bring over the, the sticker that we put up on the plaque down in Town Hall. Uh, so we continue to uphold uh, that uh, important distinction as well. Let's see. Event-wise, uh, this Saturday, I know that there's a lot of uh, great events going on across the community, but Easter Egg Hunt is this Saturday, April 9th at Downing Park. Uh, that is uh, being hosted by the Yorktown Parks and Recreation Department in conjunction with the Yorktown Lions. Uh, for children 12 and under, uh, three different times, 9.30, 10.30, and 11.30. It's a great event, a lot of fun. Um, and I want to thank all of our partners. I know Alliance for Safe Kids comes out and volunteers, and it's another great community event here in the town of Yorktown. Uh, the Parks and Rec Department also wanted me to remind everybody that registration is open for this year's summer camps. Um, we are seeing um, uh, more uh, people signing up for our summer camps this year, which is exciting. Uh, so for the, my fellow parents who may be looking for something for their children to do uh, this summer, uh, the Yorktown Summer Camps registration, you can do that online, uh, and then you can visit the Parks and Rec Department uh, over by Sparkle Lake to deliver the necessary documentations that are required. We are also still looking for camp counselors, by the way. Uh, so if any of our... Uh, young people in the in the community are looking for a summer job uh, please contact the Parks and Recreation Department because we do have several camp counselor openings that we're still looking to fill and lastly I just wanted to mention again and we're going to talk about this later in our agenda but the Hallux Mill sewer project uh, is continuing to pick up uh, steam which is great um, I really do want to uh, once again thank all of our partners in government uh, who have continued to help move this ball uh, down the field. Uh, that goes from the federal government, which awarded us $1.2 million, and I want to thank Congressman Lindair Jones for that, uh, to uh, our work with County Executive George Latimer and getting through uh, to a point where we feel that we're able to move ahead, and, and that's why this is on the agenda tonight, uh, to move this project forward and, and knowing that we have access to the $10 million of East of Hudson funds. So. All of these are really important pieces to a very, very complicated puzzle. Uh, it took a lot of work. Uh, and again, I just want to thank everybody involved for getting us to this point. And we're very excited to see it back on the agenda and moving in a positive direction. Uh, and with that, again, I want to thank Yvonne, Check, and our great library staff for all they do for our community. I, I really can't emphasize enough what a great resource this facility is, all the things they offer <coughs> from not just your traditional library books, 
Uh, but you, as you heard Yvonne talk about, the programming is spectacular. My kids love coming here whenever they can. Uh, they really do enjoy it. Uh, but it's also a great resource for our seniors, a great resource uh, for our teens. And again, knowing Yvonne's vision uh, for this facility moving forward and the program that they offer, I think it's going to be a very exciting time uh, for, uh, for, for the town of Yorktown and, and this great John C. Hart Memorial Library. And to our uh, librarians who keep the place running again thank you for all you do uh, we do have a proclamation recognizing uh, National Library Week as well uh, as well as uh, the fact <laughs> that today uh, is National Library Workers Day so we do on behalf of the whole town board want to offer our thanks and appreciation for all that they do for our community and with that Councilman Diana you're up thank you supervisor Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Shrub Oak and the John C. Hart Memorial Library. Um, I'm a little, a little partial to this side of town, as most people know. <laughs> this is... Uh, should have introduced you as the mayor of Shrub Oak. The mayor of Shrub Oak. There we go. <laughs> this has uh, been my hometown uh, for 65 years now, and uh, I, I feel it's the most bucolic part of Yorktown. Um, and I'm sure a lot of other people feel the same way. Um, hey, Saturday, we had a great SOAC um, parade with all the kids there, the little ball players and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't think people realize, or I shouldn't even say I don't think they realize, because I'm sure people do, but it's kind of put on the back burner that the SOAC leaders, the coaches, the parents that get these kids involved in this particular um, athletic club are really saving the kids' lives. Because if it wasn't for these parents and coaches and the leaders, these kids would be doing something else, and it may not be something that's good. Okay, um, we, It's been found that the kids that are, are involved in sports and, and special activities tend to stay away from the drugs and the, and the problems that, that, that are related to some youth. So uh, a big shout out to the coaches, the uh, SOAC um, leaders, and especially to you folks out there, the parents that get your, your kids involved in this stuff and keep them active. It's a great thing. Um, one thing that I want to just touch on real quick in this, in this holy season that's coming up upon us now, and, and I'm going to reflect the... the um, uh, sentiments also of the town board um, just a reminder that hate has no home here in this town okay and be kind be kind to your neighbors because they're the ones that will help you when you most need it and uh, just uh, before you end up coming up to the podium make sure you have all your facts in line and be respectful to not only us but the people in the audience and uh I think that's, uh, oh, and for all those who worship and celebrate, <clears throat> yeah. have a blessed Palm Sunday. And also Ramadan. And Ramadan, the yes. Celebrating sure. Ramadan as pardon well. Me, par, par, pardon my uh, remiss on that. I forgot to okay. mention that as well. I was wrote it on the very top. You wrote it on the top and you were down to the bottom. On the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Lackerman. All right. <clears throat> Uh, first, I want to start by uh, thanking our police department. Uh, I do a lot of work with the uh, country house uh, with the veterans there, but they went in actually for the entire group and they brought uh, Canine's uh, Spar in Dallas for a visit on March 24th. Was met with huge success. The uh, the people loved Spar in Dallas. They said, you know, a lot better behaved than Bentley when I bring him, but uh, they really uh, they really had a great time and we're very thankful for the police department, uh, not only for bringing them in, but for the the understanding of what our canine patrol does, and how they ha how they have helped our town. Um, a uh, shout out to the teen center; they had their basketball tournament come back around uh, after a couple of years hiatus. Uh, they had a, a really nice show out. They had at least 25 kid contestants. A few adults braved it. I don't know if any of you guys went. Matt, I heard you were a good basketball player back in the day. Still can't dunk. Still, yeah, well, <laughs> welcome to my world. Uh, but, you know, as, as Sergio sa would say, 
the teen center is hashtag open for business. So anyone who knows teens in the area, they had a great, great turnout from the middle school. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a great place for our kids to go and become, become socially aware. Uh, it's a lot better than sitting at home talking to someone on the Internet via a, a video game. They could sit next to each other and at least talk if they want to play the games there, or they could uh, play basketball, billiards, or a whole bunch of different things for them to do there. Uh, April 21st, uh, the, you, the uh, town will be holding our fourth Holocaust Remembrance <coughs> event after a two-year hiatus. That will be at Town Hall. Uh, we'll be working on the flyer and getting it up on the website this week. Uh, we have a uh, Polish Holocaust survivor, uh, Esther uh, Geitzels, and she will be speaking. She will be coming here live. Uh, she shares her story. Uh, she feels it is, is, is her mission and something that God wanted her to do and would help her survive f through all of this. Uh, wonderful, um, wonderful life lessons that that are learned from these. I, uh, I've I've witnessed the life changing uh, reactions to some of these stories. So uh, I recommend all who can make it to attend. And if not, we will be broadcasting that on the TV, and then we will have it recorded. As the other three are, you could look back. <coughs> on the town website and see those. And one of them is actually a resident of our town, Sam Matza, was our first Holocaust remembrance. Uh, so thank you. Seven o'clock will be the start of it. Um, any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. <clears throat> the, uh, Yorktown, uh, the Yorktown Lions will have a uh, Kentucky Turby Day at, on May 7th at the American Legion. You can look on the Lions website for more information about that. Uh, the um, Sons of the American Legion will not be doing their fundraising breakfast on the third Sunday this month, as that is Easter Sunday. They will do it on the fourth Sunday, uh, which is just after, uh, no, just after Passover, <laughs> but thank you. Uh, I was going to make matzo brai, but uh, I, don't, I don't think that'll make it on the menu. Um, and the uh, just just to put it on your calendars, uh, Tuesday, August second, six to nine, the police night out, national night out, will be held uh, at the, the sixth grade school, or for those who haven't been in town forever, the Albert A. Capolini Community and Cultural Center. Um, so mark your calendars. It's a great night. Uh, our police are there, as well as a lot of our local organizations, and you could. Uh, Get out there, meet our PD, see what they have new, and talk to some of the different groups. I think last year, Hope, Hope Not Handcuffs was there. They got a lot of interest. So please, uh, you know, a lot of the cutting edge stuff we do in our town gets pushed out there. So any questions, you might want to contact the chief of our police department, Bob Noble, so he'll have a wealth of information for you. Right, that's it for me. Great. Great. His Holocaust Remembrance um, Day. Um, it's one of the most moving days that I've had a pleasure, I shouldn't even say a pleasure, that I've had, that I've attended here. Um, you know, you can read about this stuff. I've said it before, I'll say it again. You can read about this stuff, you can watch it on television, you can see movies on it. But until you actually talk to the people that have been involved in that tragic, tragic uh, annihilation um, and that have lived through it, it really does touch home. Ed does a wonderful job. If you can come to the, the remembrance, please do. If you can't, at least catch it on the TV because it's, it's inspiring. Ed, i, I got to thank you for what you do with that and, and the education that it gave me. Well, thank you, Tommy. Uh, just part of well, thank you, John. Part part of it is that uh, I I once spoke to a Holocaust survivor from my grandmother's village where she where, where she lived, mm -hmm. and uh, my grandmother moved out b before World War II. In between World War One and World War Two, she immigrated to the United States. But when I spoke to that woman, she said she was one of seven survivors of a village of about 250 people. 
So it, it really hit close to home on, you know, how, how your life is on, on a razor's edge. It, yeah, it really is. And, and most of these uh, people that, do come, that Ed reaches out to, they come out, they have you from hello because they tell a very, very, very compelling story. It's, it's, it's amazing. I didn't mean to butt in, but I just had to give that a shout out. Well, Put that on your well calendar. Right? I, I already marked it All down, right, and we're putting it in the paper, Tommy. Thank well you. Deserved. <laughs> Councilman Esposito. Good evening. Town. Good evening, everybody. Um, I just uh, I just want to make a comment. I'm, I'm so amazed at everything that's happening at this library. I mean, I remember uh, libraries as you know card catalogs, and here they have streaming media. And if you if you ever come here on a Saturday, it's packed. It's packed. And it, you know, it's kind of like what a great way, um, uh, what a success story. Like the library has just completely been reinvented, um, and and it caters to so many people and has so many things to do for people. And, and Yvonne does a wonderful job. I think uh, she stepped out, but uh, congratulations to her. Um, I did want to touch on the uh, Art Around Town initiative. Um, that's something that's going on between the uh, the Town of Yorktown Arts and Culture Committee. Um, very proud of the Arts and Culture Committee. I had a direct hand in creating it and then merging it with the town on behalf of the, with the chamber. And, and they are um, doing something with the Yorktown Small Business Association. So you're going to see um, art in various um, uh, restaurants and uh, stores and stuff like that just for you to peruse. And you could even purchase it. They had a great, uh, a great uh, event uh, a couple of weeks ago. And um, it was really nice. I mean, it's something different, something great, something that we really need in Yorktown, and uh, it's here. Uh, we did have the uh, Granite Knolls uh, Inclusive Playground groundbreaking, so that is on the way. Another great initiative, another uh, leading from the front uh, objective that Yorktown uh, does have. There was a ribbon cutting at Peter Pratt's. Uh, they have new owners there, Enver and Naya. They also added some new menu items, uh, fixed the place up a little more. The place is really fantastic. It's really uh, a gem in Yorktown, um, and the atmosphere is just unbelievable. So I encourage everybody to uh, support the locals. Food was great, too. Support mm -hmm. the locals' baby, right? Yeah, yeah baby. that's right, baby. Because they are. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> open for business, baby. <laughs> so, um, I, and the parade, Tommy, uh, the Shrubble Parade was unbelievable. Uh, so many people showed up. I got pictures on Facebook over it, and um, and, and it was just great to see. It's, it's nice to see kind of some kind <laughs> of normalcy starting to take over the town again. Uh, hopefully that stays. Um, I will tell you that on April 25th, uh, a young gentleman named Ryan Vogel from Troop 173 will be getting his Eagle Scout uh, awarded to him. So that's going to be something that... Um, that we should look out for because that's a great accomplishment. And other than that, um, you know, just everybody keep up the good work. The atmosphere in the town, I think, is fantastic. And uh, and I think that's what we need to continue to do. Thank you. Sergio, I'm sorry, April 25th is a Monday, is that correct? Um, I have April 25th. No, I think it's a... Uh, it's uh, definitely I mean, a Monday because Tuesday is my anniversary. I won't forget that. I don't want to beat it. You want me to check? Because if it's not Monday, you, you think you Tuesday can, you anniversary. Can, you can check. You're on TV here. I know. That's <laughs> All okay. right, we'll correct the date and we'll get it out to you. <laughs> All right, Councilwoman Howitt. Good evening, everyone. Um, I feel like I, I missed you all since we skipped one Tuesday. That was, you know, a little out of, out of, out of my routine. Um, on March 27th, we had a really busy day. We had the bleacher celebration for Matthew Call, right? Yep. And we had the lacrosse kickoff at Legacy Field, which was really amazing and really got all that exercise out on my little boys. And I, I'm forever grateful. The blessings and the energy that this town can offer families and friends and the community are just tremendous. And then we went to the um, Yorktown um, Ambulance Volunteer Corp, had their 59th anniversary, and we were able to celebrate some really local heroes. And that was really, really nice as well. And I was also at the SOAC. I'm really sad that at the YAC we had a, we, it was rained out because I'm not really sure what happened this weekend with the weather, but it was definitely not for the kids to be outside. And it was tremendous to see the amount of energy and the healings and the blessings that are happening now coming out from COVID and watching families get out there and share and chat. And that was beautiful. Um, but other than that, I am glad to see you all. I hope that everyone had a great week and a half since the last time I saw you and 
I look forward to this being a productive meeting. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we will forego the highway superintendent report. Uh, we do know uh, that, of course, our highway superintendent, Dave Paganelli, is working hard uh, as he continues to regrade uh, the roads so that he can release his list for those roads that will be repaved this year. And we appreciate all of his efforts uh, and that of his whole department. Uh, we do have two proclamations that we will um, pass quickly. Uh, the first, uh, as we just said earlier, it is National Library Week, and so we do have a proclamation uh, that reads, uh, whereas today's libraries are more about what they can do with and for their communities and not just about what they have on the shelves. And whereas libraries have long served as trusted institutions, often the heart of their cities, towns, schools, and academic campuses. And whereas libraries are a resource for all, as you said, Councilman, it has no home here. For all, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, ability, gender, or socioeconomic status. And whereas John C. Harbor Memorial Library, you see the charter from New York State in 1920. And whereas the John C. Harbor Memorial Library is consistently among the top five in circulation for all of Westchester County, and provides a wide variety of programs, much that we've heard just moments ago from our director, Yvonne Check. Whereas this uh, year alone, the John C. Harb Memorial Library launched several new programs, including the 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten, and, as was highlighted, their mobile hotspot lending program. And whereas during the COVID-19 pandemic, the John C. Harb Memorial Library continued to provide access for residents to material through its porch pickup, as well as online. And whereas the town of Yorktown recognizes librarians as information professionals who provide expertise, services, and guidance for patrons to access credible sources and material, making their own informed decisions about the world today. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Yorktown join in recognizing National Library Week as April 3rd to April 9th, and be it further resolved that the town of Yorktown recognizes Tuesday, April 5th as National Library Workers' Day. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The next we have one for Arbor Day. It reads as follows. Whereas Arbor Day, which began in Nebraska in 1872, is now observed throughout the nation and world. And whereas celebrating Arbor Day has been a tradition in Yorktown for more than 100 years, recognizing the benefits trees provide and are encouraging tree planting in, t in town parks, in or around wetlands and stream corridors, along our streets and highways, and around the properties of our homes and businesses. And whereas Tree City USA, a program of the Arbor Day Foundation and the United States Forest Service, recognizes municipalities and U.S. Armed Forces bases all across the country which meet established requirements for tree protection and promotion of the benefits of healthy woodlands. And whereas the acceptance of its renewal application this year marks the 11th consecutive year of Yorktown's designation as a Tree City USA, duly recognizing the efforts of its citizens and town officials to promote a healthy environment for all. And whereas the theme of this year's student poster contest is Trees Invite Me Outside, which recognizes the benefits of spending time outdoors, connecting people with nature, and calling attention to Yorktown's beautiful parks and extensive network of nature trails. Now, therefore, be it resolved uh, that uh, I, Matt Slater, along with the town board of the town of Yorktown, hereby proclaim Friday, April 29th, 2022, as Arbor Day in the town of Yorktown, and urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and Yorktown's 11th anniversary as a Tree City USA and to support our trees and woodlands, be it further resolved that all are attended, invited to attend our Arbor Day ceremony at Patriot Park adjacent to Town Hall on Friday, April 29th, 2022 at 4 p.m. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? With that, we'll turn it over to our Poet Laureate, John McMullen. Three quick comments on what Tommy said. Um, when my son played SOAC, he was he was a teammate of one of the best athletes that Lakeland High School ever had, and a four-year All-American lacrosse player at Syracuse, Ricky Beersley. Mm -hmm. So that was it. Yeah. Uh, the other thing of uh, the hometown, my hometown is Jefferson Valley, and it's perfect except for that goddamn stop sign. It's going to someone kill that I keep talking about. Yep, we're working on that. <laughs> and. Uh, and it's National Poetry Month, as it pointed out. I run the um, the Yorktown Poetry Workshop, and my guest this month is is, is the previous poet lord of, of, of the state of Missouri, Alecky Barnstone, who's a nationally recognized poet. 
<clears throat> Speaking of National Poetry Month, I was honored in the last three weeks to be part of two international poetry groups relating uh, to, um, to the Ukraine. I'll mention one of them in my, my poem for tonight, but the other one last uh, Saturday, there was, there was 33 poets from 11 countries, and, and four of them belong to the OT um, Poetry Workshop here. The 11 countries included the Ukraine, Romania, Poland, uh, Germany, uh, England, and France. And and when they complete the uh, the MP3, did some editing that has to be done, or the MP4, I'll put it up on the website. Cool. Great, Sean. Okay. The communion of poets. Christians use the word communion in two ways, as, as a synonym for the Holy Eucharist, and as a group of like-minded holy people, the communion of saints. I used a lot of in referring to an initiative from Poetizer to the group as the communion of poets, the group that came together in response to, uh, to the result of a global uh, poetry workshop. Poetizer uh, solicited poetry from all over the world to be sent to Europe as the symbol of, of solidarity with the Ukrainian people. Then poets responded. There, there are now thousands of poems that have been received and printed on, on the John Lennon wall in Prague. Uh, poems are in English, uh, Ukrainian, Russian, German, and they're not only about the war. Some are romantic, erotic, philosophical, about nature, and other topics. It's just poets reaching out to others and to the world. The community of poets is a, is a modern community of saints. I have a picture here of the wall, all of these things at the John... Uh, at the, uh, the wall in Prague. And if anyone's interested, I will send them the links to that and also to all of the poems. So thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. All right, next we'll go to Courtesy of the Floor. Uh, as a reminder, you don't have to wait for courtesy of the floor to raise any issues that you may have to the town. You can contact Town Hall. Uh, you can speak to any one of us. You can speak to our town clerk. I'll get right back up. Back. There was something uh, posted on this neighborhood thing called, called Neighborhood that's online. And apparently there has been, and the police probably know about it. Is this a courtesy of the floor issue, John? Yeah. Well, give me two seconds then, just if we can. We, so as I was saying, courtesy of the floor, you don't have to wait to courtesy of the floor to bring up issues like this, John. You can, you can contact us. Uh, as a reminder, courtesy of the floor, you have three minutes. We ask that you, as Councilman Diana said earlier, uh, keep your uh, comments focused on, on an issue at hand. Uh, also make sure that you keep them respectful, respectful of our community, respectful of our town board, uh, and respectful of anyone and all who may be listening and watching. And with that... Mr. McMullen. Thank you, sir. Happy to welcome you to the podium for courtesy of the floor. Oh, welcome one back. Person, one person brought it up that he got a call from the Chase Bank that there was a person trying to cash a check of his for $4,000. He didn't want it. Apparently, people have been rifling mailboxes and uh, the mailbox by the house yes. when the red, when, where the red flag goes up. And there's some a process I didn't even know about called washing the checks. And when you wash the check, you to take out both the payee and and the money, write your own name in or whatever. And the, wow. the, the apparently they've been all over the surrounding area here. The police are aware of it, and they're advising everyone. And there are some people that don't like to pay their bills online, but if, but if you pay them through your bank, you're not going to have this problem through your bank. Or if you don't put the red the red flag up at, until you're ready to run out the door, pull up, put your thing in, and stand there, you'd be better off. Huh. But it's pretty scary, and I hadn't heard anything about this, that I'm a tech person. So. Thank yeah. you, John. Thank you, John. Next. Ed Suffone, resident for 52 years, president of the United Taxpayers of Yorktown, because nobody wanted to take over when I decided to give it up. So now I'm back. 
My first question is, is the audit report finished? Yes or no? The auditor's report. Is it Not yet. Not yet. So we don't know how much money you guys got. We'll be presenting. I'll, I'll answer at the end. I got right. you. Auditor's so, report. So what happened was last year, I made it up here, and it was $20 million in unassigned fund balance. Now, you got, I know I've seen you receive more money from sales tax and from the state and other things. So I'm estimating that you're going to have more than $20 million, okay? Now, I changed my mind last time. I said spend the money except for 15%. That's the people's money. You can't keep holding it. And over the, the last five supervisors, it went from lady over there, $2.4 million, to $11.2 million on Lonnie Gilbert, and under you with $20 million. So listen, I'm still here as a tax activist, okay? Now, the second thing before three minutes for now, I wanted to hold a rally to get back the United States independent energy uh, that we had before our president got in one day and dissolved everything else. Now, I just paid for 150 gallons of oil, and you're an oil man, right? 700 and something dollars for 150 gallons, plus 700 and something a month before. I'm asking the board to have a day set aside. It could be a Sunday, like a Sunday afternoon, all over the country saying that we got to get our energy under control. Because you spoke about Con Edison bills. The only way to do it is petition the government or have rallies. Okay? So that's uh, my, my question to you is uh, I'm asking the board to have a rally. I'll be there if I can make it, but I'll, but I'll be there. All right? Now, I've done these before, and other people that are on the board have been at my rallies. Okay? And the main thing is to help the people survive, to lower the cost of living in Yorktown and in the United States. So that's my only thing. I hope you can figure out a date. And I was going to do it myself, and put, but I, but my organization will help you out also, okay? Thank you, Mr. Safone. Thank you. Anyone else for courtesy of the floor? Good evening, Susan Stiegel. I have uh, two questions for the board. One is a follow-up on um, a meeting about a month ago when the controller told us that the final, final, final rules for the COVID money have been released, and she said that as part of the rules, there has to be public input, mm -hmm. and uh, you were planning to do a survey, so mm -hmm. I'd like to know when we can expect to see that survey. I assume that you're going to do a survey when we can expect it, because there is a deadline that the money has to be spent by. Okay. Mm -hmm. The second um, issue is um, one of the items on the agenda, there's a resolution to be passed about a stormwater permit for um, Alameda. Um, in reading through the resolution, if you go down to, I think it's page five in the agenda, there's mm -hmm. a list of conditions uh, towards the bottom of the page, and it lists five conditions that this permit, that the applicant has to meet. And number five says, other draft conditions. <laughs> um, it seems as if this resolution has not been thoroughly vetted, <laughs> because otherwise, if there were other conditions, they would have been included. Um, and I remember at the public hearing, the point was made that the um, applicant had violated the conditions of the previous permit um, egregiously, and I think more than a year had gone by without it being remediated. And it was suggested that before the applicant, it was two parts to his, um, what he was planning to do. One is to fix up what he destroyed before, and the other thing was more additional improvements to his home. One of the conditions that was suggested was that he mm -hmm. fix up what he destroyed first before he be allowed to do the additional improvements because, unfortunately, 
He can't be trusted. And I don't see any condition like that. So I hope that you will postpone voting on this resolution until those two issues are cleared up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eagle. Anyone else? Courtesy of the floor. Dan Sprouse, a 55 year resident. Um, I don't know if you're aware that there is a Sun Day. S U N D A Y. It was initiated by Jimmy Carter in uh, May 3rd, 1978. And um, it's specifically devoted to advocacy for solar power. You might want to consider doing a solar day and a resolution or proclamation for that. I'm uh, still going to continue on about my concern for the trees because you just did a, um, a proclamation for Arbor Day and uh, you might want to have the art contest. I thought you were going to throw that one in for the kids. You usually do that. I think we're supposed we'll throw that in. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, and not to belabor issues, there are some properties that I think are not suitable for solar and they're not suitable to build on. How's that? So it's not always about uh, the land use or the rights of the property owner. It's about what's good for the town. And there are some properties, and there's plenty of them. There's open space all over Yorktown where it's kept so no one does anything with it. And I believe there are properties in this town where people are trying to develop them. They're not suitable for anything but to be left alone. So that's a new spin on the whole thing. In this town right now, I've only been there once, Granite Knolls. It's not in my life. It's probably one of the best parks around, just like this is one of the best libraries in the, in probably in the United States. As far as I know or knew, there was a proposed solar project at Granite Knolls that was going to have a canopy over the parking lot. Now, all of a sudden, I understand, and I, I have no idea how that got into the mix. They also want to put an in-ground. And I don't get it. You have one of the most beautiful parks, in the, maybe in the country, and you have this new park for adaptive or adoptive park, and you've got, how much stuff are you going to cram into this park? Give the people a little space. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Strauss. Thank you, Mr. Strauss. Anybody else for courtesy? Oh, yep. Good evening, Sarah Wilson, 31 year resident of Yorktown. I'm short, so I'm on my tiptoes. <laughs> um, I want to express my appreciation as well to the uh, Von Check and the staff here at the library. They won. <clears throat> run wonderful programs um, for the children and for the adults. And tonight I just wanted to highlight one program that's coming up this Thursday, uh, beginning at 6.30. It's part of a series of one-hour talks by members of Yorktown 100, which is a volunteer group of concerned citizens who are working to spread the word about climate change. Our goal is 100% reduction in uh, carbon emissions by 2040. That's what the 100 refers to. The series is climate change, what you need to know. And this Thursday session is bringing it local here into Yorktown and saying what's happening locally. We've, <laughs> we're all talking about it. Um, so you're invited to join us for a one hour discussion. We'll talk about the legislation that's recently passed, the solar farms, the battery energy storage systems, actions that the government's taken with community solar, 
uh, LED street lights, the food scrap drop-off sites, etc. cetera. Um, and we'll wrap it up with actions that uh, residents can take, businesses can take, organizations can take, our school districts can take, all right here in Yorktown to help fight climate change. So 6.30 Thursday night, right here in this room. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Thank Sarah. you Sarah. Anyone else for courtesy of the floor? Hello, this is Paul Moskowitz, a uh, member of Yorktown 100, and I'd like to fo follow up on what Sarah has said. First of all, it's going to be Thursday, April 7th. This, sh this meeting may be rebroadcast far into the future, so we have to be clear on the date. And that's at 6.30. And in, a in addition to telling people how to reduce their carbon footprint, we are going to tell people how to save money by doing so. That is, reducing your carbon fo footprint is something of a spir spiritual thing to do to help save the planet. On the other hand, if you can reduce the amount of oil you need to heat your house, a la Mr. Chiffon, or reduce the amount of electricity you need, this will save you money. If the town can do the same, this will save us tax money. So the emphasis is not just on how much carbon dioxide we're producing, but how we can save the town and citizens of the town on the expenses involved in the, the purchase of fossil fuels. At some point, when uh, Mr. Putin gets around to invading another country, we will see the price of fossil fuels go up again. It's much better to have an electric car than to have a gas car that you can't afford. So come around on Thursday. Join us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Moskowitz. Anyone else for courtesy of the floor? Sir, if you come on up, just introduce yourself for, for us, if you don't mind. Yes, I'm new here. <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, good evening. Uh, Andrew Valenzuela. I'm a Yorktown resident uh, over 25 years. And I'm here for, you're familiar with the walkway from 118 to Baldwin Road. That yes. became the trailway. So I live there. I live on default court. Mm -hmm. So I have issues with, uh, it's the dog walkers that are not picking up after their dog, so they're from the neighborhood, and now there's, because of that opened up, I notice a lot, all the dogs are walking that way, so they come by my home and everybody else's home off of uh, Etna mm -hmm. and Midland, so I'm wondering if somehow there could be some type of sign uh, posted to the entrance, because at the end of my block, I'm on a dead end, and it could be posted there where they can read the sign and, and go by the rules of the dog walking and picking mm -hmm. up. And, okay, it's happened on my own property. I had to pick up somebody else's. Oh, my That's not good. On my neighbor across the street, you know, I've seen it. I, in fact, I forgot about this meeting. I let my dog out this evening, and I went to, you know, across the street. I saw my neighbors, and I saw it right there. So I was like, whoa, I got to hit this meeting. Yep. I was told by animal control. I got to, you know. And so I came here to try to address that about putting up some kind of sign or something to maybe uh, that people can get it. And it's not the dog's fault. <laughs> right, right, right. You know. We'll, we'll, we make, we'll make comments at the end. Excuse me? We'll make comments at the end once we close courtesy of the floor. Okay. But I appreciate you coming and bringing this important mm -hmm. issue to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Sir? Good evening, everyone. I'm the owner of the golf gas station right up the road, uh, corner of Route 6 in Stroud. Can you give us your name, please? Dia. D-I-A-H. Great. So I'm here to hopefully try to clear some things up. I heard some controversy again about uh, seven years ago, almost eight years ago, when I bought the gas station, 
about trees that were cut down when I purchased the property. So I'm just trying to make, uh, try to uh, explain and have people understand that I took a old rundown gas station that was really in shambles. I redid it. I put seven figures into the ground to clean up contamination in the water table that was, you know, getting into the dirt environment. Uh, the trees that were taken down were overgrown invasives, poison ivy, diseased trees that looked like, you know, they were going to fall onto my property eventually. There's a swale of wetlands behind my mm -hmm. property that I picked up uh, two, dumps two dumpster worth of garbage filled of everything you could think of from hubcaps, tires, McDonald's, uh, garbage, you know, of all sorts. So, you know, I took a place and really put everything I had into it mm -hmm. to make it nice and uh, a friendly local business, you know. And I'm just hoping that people could see, you know, why I did this and, you know, and since then, I've planted over 50 plants and trees combined to make up for the diseased and dead and overgrown, you know, uh, trees that I took down. So I came up tonight to hope uh, this clears everything up and, you know, moving forward, we can all put the tree thing to rest and not have to hear about it, <laughs> you know. And I constantly get, you know, compliments from many local people, customers, of how nice the place looks. So I, that should, you know, count for something, I think, also. So just wanted to clear that up and, you know. Appreciate you coming up. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Anyone else for courtesy of the floor? Good evening. I'm actually very glad that I came uh, after the previous speaker, and I was very moved by what the previous speaker said. Um, but the previous speaker did not mention anything related to what Councilman Diana inferred two weeks ago. I'm sorry, ma'am. Can you just introduce yourself? I'm you sorry. That? My name is Miriam Messing Curtin. Oh, I am almost you. 30 years, 33 years here in Yorktown. Good evening. Councilman Diana and the board, you are in receipt of my letter dated April 1st. None of you responded, and I sincerely wish that you had addressed my letter to you and my two letters to the editor. I didn't want to send the letters to the editor. I gave you two days to respond. You didn't. I came to discuss prejudice. Prejudice is disgusting. The effects of prejudice are dangerous life-changing and long-lasting. Man's inhumanity to man has been built on prejudice. An allegation of prejudice is to be taken seriously, but a false allegation of prejudice trivializes the issue and defames the accused, embarrasses the accuser, and hurts everyone. So when you make a false statement about prejudice against a system, against a citizen, and then act with righteous indignation about this falsehood. It trivializes and abuses the whole issue of prejudice and defames an undeserving man. All of this because of trees. I wasn't going to, I had three speeches, and I wasn't going to talk about this. This is prejudice. This is a Nazi propaganda photo taken in 1940 of my father at the age of 12 in a lineup of boys on the way to Auschwitz-Birkenau. My spa father spent five years and was released by American soldiers from Mauthausen on May 6, 1945. You brought up the Holocaust, Mr. Lochterman. I wasn't actually going to bring this up. This is my mother. She's 88 years old. She was born in Kiev. This is a photo of her in a deep in a displaced persons camp in Austria in 1947. This is the only photo that I have, the earliest photo. My mother has no baby pictures because my grandmother ran for the train to escape being slaughtered Babiar in 1941 to escape the Nazis. 
So that's what prejudice is. When you throw the word prejudice around so lightly and trivialize it, after listening to years and years of Nazi comparisons and you doing nothing, when Mr. Grace came here on so many occasions and trivialized the Holocaust and you don't even have the decency to address it and apologize to this, to this wonderful man, shame on all of you. Shame on all of you. Anyone else for courtesy? No, no. Anyone else for courtesy of the floor? Anyone else who has not spoken for courtesy of the floor? Motion to close courtesy of the floor. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Comments from the board? I have a few. First, uh, on the property rights, uh, unfortunately, you know, when someone owns property, the town board does not have the right to tell them they cannot do anything that is not within property rights. That's what property rights are. They trump the town. Uh, I know in the past, uh, plots of land have been donated, carved out from bigger plots. Uh, you know, people are always welcome to try to make an offer to buy it, to donate it. But, you know, it's, it's really crossing the line of, of local government to say, hey, I know that's your right, but we're going to take it away. Um, for the dog thing, as I've walked my dogs quite a bit uh, through the street, Andrew, yep, sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Um, I, I agree with you 100%. We always are cleaning piles of dog poop off our front lawn, and I know my dog is fenced into the back, and then when we walk them, we, of course, clean up. Mm -hmm. A lot of our neighbors have gone out and purchased from, like, uh, Pet, Pet Supply Plus over, in, uh, over by BJ's. They have little signs that are basically, you know, be respectful, curb your dog. A lot of my neighbors have them on their lawns because people, unfortunately, do not respect the curb your do dog laws. So... Uh, we, we actually can't take comment once it's once courtesy the floor is closed. Just something if you've done that, that's uh, you know make sure. I don't know how effective a big a big curb your dog sign is. Um, and then you know I I don't really understand uh, this messing where you're coming from on on a couple things. I mentioned the Holocaust as I believe that we teach it. I believe that we never forget it that it's not trivialized. We bring a Holocaust survivor to town to speak about it so people understand it. I don't think that trivialized, uh, trivializes it at all. Uh, as for, you know, the, the casting out of racism, prejudice, you're absolutely right because I've been a victim of that from people in this room. So it is a two-way street. And I always say that, hey, if that's someone's opinion, they're entitled to their opinions. They're not entitled to their own facts. But I don't go back on that. You know what? If anyone wants to have a conversation with me about it, that's fine. But to, I, I, don't, I don't understand the, the, uh, the ostracizing of the entire town board. And I just think that's uncalled for as well. Because I'm just saying what, what, your, what your interpretations are, fine. You're, you're ostracizing the entire town board, and I know Sergio and Luciana have been on it for, for four months. So, no, okay, please, can, no, yeah. no comments from the audience. But you did include so, us. So, well, please, no, no comments from the yeah, audience. Please, so, no comments from the right. audience. So I just want to leave it at that. I, I think that that was very uncalled for as well. Other comments from the board? Yeah, I have a couple comments. People have to start getting their information straight. Okay? I did not call out Dan Strauss. I called out the amount of abuse over the cutting of trees and the cleanup of a certain property here in Shrub Oak, my hometown. This is where I live, okay? I've been hearing it now for at least six years. The man who owns that station has cleaned it up. That was garbage there. Pure garbage. And I'm going to reiterate what I said the last time, and I'm standing by my statement that that particular station has done a 360 degree turnaround, and no one seemed to care about the one down the road that was dispelling oil, grease, 137 cars, I believe it was, of all sorts of disrepair. I wasn't even going to mention this tonight, but 
because it was brought up, I'm gonna. I'm standing by my statement that I feel that there is some sort of, seems like almost a prejudice to the man who owns that gas station. It's not reflective on Dan Strauss. It is. Yep. It isn't. No, Mr. Strauss, dude, Mr. Strauss. No. No. Mr. Strauss, I there's respect, no comments from the audience. I respect Dan Strauss and what he does, but it was not it was not reflective on him. It was reflective on all the nonsense that goes on with this type of <clears throat> statements. And the wrong statements that were put in the paper now about us minimalizing Nazis and so on and so forth, that's uncalled for. Mr. Grace was the one who initiated with Ed Lachterman the Holocaust, the Holocaust survivor remembrance. You know, we could go on and on about this. It's time to put it behind us. As I said at the beginning, hate has no home here in Yorktown. I'm going to stand by that, and I'm going to reiterate it time and time and time again. You can't turn your back on your neighbors. Period. The end. Thank you. Actually, Tommy, I, I will also uh, say that Mr. Grace has something in common uh, with Ms. With Message, that his mother was also a Holocaust survivor. She was a kinder transport Holocaust survivor. Oh, I forgot about that. Because right. his, and his, his father, uh, uh, I'm sorry, his grandfather was actually arrested by the Nazis and put into a concentration camp, and he managed to escape. But you're, you're absolutely right. There's... There's, you know, you, you're entitled to your opinion, but not your facts. Other comments from the board? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> I understand, uh, ma'am, that, uh, you know, you feel that the <coughs> comments were egregious and you have every right to feel that way. Um, but it's not okay to make, just throw comments out like you did and chastise an entire group if you think one person made a comment that you didn't appreciate. And so that's equally egregious, what you did. And I don't appreciate it because you don't know who I am and you don't know what I stand for. And to come up here and call me a racist or to, to say I'm trivializing, trivializing, no, excuse me, ma'am, I'm no, speaking. No, there's no comments. Excuse me, ma'am. We will. Excuse me, ma'am. There will be no comments. There will be no comments from the public. There will be no comments from the public. Or we will go, we'll go make him vote. There will be no comments from the public. It is, it is, it is. Excuse me. Public comment has been closed. Excuse me. We respected you when you were speaking, and I appreciate the same respect when I'm speaking. And I don't think that's too much to ask from all of you. Okay? You came here and you chastised us as a group. And that's equally as wrong if you believe what Councilman Diana said was wrong. What you did was just as equally as wrong. And, and it's not okay. And it is a two-way street. And we can be respectful and get our points across. Thank you. Any uh, comments, <clears throat> Councilman? You're okay? Uh, I, I mean, I have, a, I have comments on some of the other speakers. If Okay, well, I just, I feel like, Mr. Moskowitz, thanks so much for bringing up the fossil fuels and the awareness. I think that's really great. I also am really grateful that the 100, the climate change conversation is actually coming to Yorktown. I think that's also great because I know that we're doing all that stuff with Volta to have more sites for, um, for the charging stations. Um, as far as What's going on now with the mail? I am totally going to never put up my red flag because I do do that sometimes. And I will use the mailbox that's in front of Town Hall. Right. Um, so I will definitely take care of that. And I just want to say thank you for looking after the neighborhood. Um, and then um, Dea, I think I was correct. I just want to say thank you and thank you for coming and, and sharing your point of view. I think that everyone's voice is welcome here. And I am really sorry that. I, I did not, I will speak for myself, but I did not respond to you, Ms. Messing. I, I, will, I will apologize for myself. And I also will represent that your email did not go unlooked. And unfortunately, there is a little bit of a of dilution here because we all do respect Mr. Strauss. And um, we also, and please don't tell me to shut up. Or you can tell me to my face. Mr. Strauss? Because I'm cool with that. Trust me, I'm okay. You can tell me to my face. I don't need to. Mr. Strauss, please, let's be respectful. I'm just, I'm just letting you know, there's levels, people will say things, and we've even had words, Mr. Strauss, where people will interpret things incorrectly. There are two 
sides to every story, and then unfortunately there is the truth. And here, the only thing that's supposed to stand is it's a place where we're allowed to bring our voice. Not corner people, not make people feel less... I haven't said anything. Okay. Why are you addressing Again, me? no not. comments fact, from fact, the public. I'm, in fact, I'm just addressing everyone. And I just wanted... No comments me. from the public. Well, when you said you to shut... I have great hearing. I have really good hearing. But with that being said, I just wanted to apologize for not responding to your email because I do believe that as far as the town board goes, it is our job to address. And there are a few emails that I have yet to address due to fear of how they will be reviewed. So when people... So I think it's important that we start to go ahead and treat each other as adults and respect each other as humans and go from there. But when it's unfair and it's played and we get played with words, it's not going to fly. And then you're not going to get a response. So on yours, I am sorry I did not respond. I just did not believe that Tommy's intentions were being shown there. And I did want to have a, more of a conversation with him before bringing right. it up. So thank you. I'm done. Mr. No, I appreciate that. And, and I agree with, the, with, with what you said, Luciana. I, I do. I, I also apologize for not responding to the email. But similarly, I didn't think that that was... Uh, the characterization of Councilman Diana's comments, and so I also wanted to have a further conversation with him, which honestly I haven't had a chance to. But uh, I do want to just address some of the other people who came forward. Uh, um, Mr. Safone, uh, regarding the auditor's report, uh, we believe that they wrapped up last week, so we are waiting for the draft report. Uh, but it will, of course, be brought to a public presentation, as it always is, uh, which uh, I would love for you to be a part of and, and be there for when our auditors come and tell us how we did last year, but uh, we are keeping a very close eye on that. Uh, Ms. Siegel's question about ARPA and public input, we are trying to devise an online survey so that we can get public input, but we are very much uh, looking forward to doing that. I don't want to put a definitive timeline on there, but I can tell you that it's in the not too distant future. Uh, so we are moving forward there. Um, Dan, CRC, can you just grab the podium for me real quick? I just, can you address the question uh, that was raised regarding the, the other draft conditions that's in this resolution for, Al for Almeida? Sure. That, that was basically a placeholder because I know there was we had a discussion about this and if the board wanted to add anything else because mm -hmm. um, we handled it as a plain vanilla uh, application in that we're not in the business of enforcement. We're in granting permits. But that being said, <coughs> Um, the, the condition about the, the, the applicant had uh, wanted to come in and do the wall during the winter in advance of doing the planting because the planting would happen now. Mm -hmm. So that issue really is sort of moot at this point because the winter's over, it's the planting season. So that placeholder, you know, we could use that to plug in the, uh, to get the landscaping done now condition. Okay. Which I think is, is the right thing to do, which is what I said earlier. Right. Okay. So we can amend the resolution to include that uh, condition? Yeah, we got, uh, has, it has a number and everything. Okay. We're ready for it. All right. Thank you. I just have a couple more comments, uh, if, if you're done. Uh, just a few more. I do want to thank Mr. Uh, uh, Valenzuela. Did I say that correctly, sir? Uh, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for raising the issue. Maybe this is something that we can work with Ms. Siegel and the, and the Trail Town Committee on to try to find some type of signage that we can add to the trail. Uh, it's just so people are aware if they're walking their dogs that they should be curbing their dogs. And maybe what we can also do is, um, uh, I, you know, the other thing, Councilman Lachterman, is maybe is. Um, I know, like over at FDR, uh, they've got the stations, they've got the state station. the waste stations. So maybe that's another thing that we can look to, you know, enhance that uh, particular trail with. So this way, there's people have the waste station right there with the plastic bags. I mean, I'm a former dog dog owner. I, I hate saying former because I'm always a dog owner in my mind uh, and in my heart. But um, I can tell you that that was one of those things that I was particularly. Um, uh, very conscious of and and like Councilman Lachterman, you know I I always made sure that I cleaned up after after my we we can meet meet we can have a conversation afterwards but the um, but so that thank you for raising it and we'll, we'll try to put some partners together to, to help address it uh, but I think it's a, it's an important issue that uh, needs to be raised um, I do want to thank Mr Moskowitz for um, and Sarah Wilson for for plugging Yorktown 100 they're doing a great job. Uh, in regards to the saving of uh, money, especially for the town, 
Um, we are pursuing energy audits through the CSC task force, which is which I think is going to be a great baseline for us. And one of our members actually did a greenhouse gas em uh, emissions uh, audit, and uh, I think that was very interesting and, and that data was I think very helpful in driving some of our decision making processes so you know we're still always trying to find um, important information I think and data points that help drive decision making and I think that the town and the town well this town board and the previous town board I think really recognize both the environmental benefits but also the cost saving benefits uh, of um, of renewable energy and, and tackling this important issue um, and then the only other thing I was I was uh, Mr. Strauss, just so you know, the um, the Granite Knolls proposal was publicly vetted. Uh, this was all done. You know, there was an RFP. We, there was uh, the town board unanimously approved the project as proposed with the both the uh, carport and ground arrays. Um, it's in front of the planning board at this point, and they're going through to make sure that it. it and we have our director of planning uh, in the back. Uh, but the whole point of it going through the planning board approval process is to make sure that we're applying our own laws uh, to our own projects. And it's not uh, something that uh, we're um, trying to make sure that we practice what we preach, if you, if, if you know what I mean. So uh, I think the planning board is looking at it. They've been diligently working on it. Uh, and we'll see what the final outcome is. But that was the, the pro scope of projects never changed. It was awarded publicly and it hasn't deviated from that uh, from, from that uh, uh, bid. Um, and I think that's all I have. Councilman Esposito. So um, Dan, I, I agree with you. Not not every property should be developed. Um, you know, that's why when when I'm looking at a project, <clears throat> I'm really looking at what they contribute to you know, a park-like area, something that, that, that also brings in a uh, community-based that, that'll draw the community in and give the kids and the children and the families to a place to walk and hang out and, and breathe the fresh air. So I'm always looking at that, and I understand your point. Not everything is should be developed. Unfortunately, to Councilman Lachtman's point, there are properties, and properties do have rights, and we just can't you know, willy-nilly trample those rights, you know, almost like almost like a human being's rights. It's not as that, but it's pretty close to it, you know, in, in that respect, as far as the law goes. Uh, now, maybe we, not, we might not feel that way inside, you know, in our hearts and our minds, but, you know, as far as the law goes, that, that's really where it comes from. I look at projects, I look if there's union labor, I look to see how much, what percentage are, they, are, are union workers, so this way everybody kind of gets to share the wealth and, and eat and, and enjoy the fruits and the benefits of a project that comes into town. So I'm always looking at that and I can tell you in speaking with, with everybody up here, they're always looking at that kind of stuff too when we're speaking in private. So rest assured we are looking at that, we are, that that's foremost on our mind. And also um, to your points, if I could, Councilman, is that just because I wrote it down too, that I just but I didn't get to it. But no, go ahead. There, there, there are laws that dictate the process that everything goes through. So it's not like uh, it's easy to say you don't want or we may not want something, but there are laws that the decision makers have to apply to make sure that it's done. Uh, I think in a fair and and consistent manner, and that's one of the challenges that we face in government every day. And and so. Uh, I think it's important to, to understand that, to know that, uh, and, and recognize that um, whether it's the town board, the planning board, whether it's the tree law, the wetlands law, what, you know, all those are in place for a purpose, and they all are applied for, in, in a consistent manner. And, and one thing is sitting on the Zoning Board of Appeals, even a prohibition has an appeal process. Could win, might not win, but there is a process for as a right, and, and it is a, per, a personal right when you own the property. So, you know, people have their rights, and, and government is, you know, by the people for the people. So we have to uphold those rights. That's, that's part of our, uh, our charter, basically. And I will say, you know, I, I didn't see a note <laughs> I made here. Uh, with Dia, you know, my, my uh, wife and I drive by the property often, and she grew up in Yorktown. She was born and raised here and just always comments on how great it does look. So, you know, thank you for what you did there. It is appreciated by some, some look at the whole picture and, and really do appreciate seeing what it is. 
Councilman Esposito, you want to continue? As far as the solar canopy and solar in general, I'm torn by the whole thing. You know, I know we need to move to solar. I want to get an electric car. My, my lifestyle and how my job and it just doesn't allow me, it, it, it just wouldn't be appropriate for me to have that because I, it wouldn't be functional enough. Um, you know, but I am, that's foremost on my mind. I know the solar canopy is a big issue at Granite Knolls. But, you know, you can't put solar in the ground. You can't put solar on roofs. You can't put solar on the solar canopy. Uh, people want solar. People don't want solar. It's a really big challenge, one that I didn't see coming when I got elected, that this would be such a, a, a thing that weighs on me so heavily. Um, and so I understand where you're coming from, uh, but, you know, we have to put solar somewhere. It has to happen. We need it. We need it for the, uh, for, for the environment. We need it to save the earth question is is how do we mitigate it <clears throat> where do we put it how do we make it work where everybody's happy it's never going to happen everybody's never going to be happy right because everybody has their own cons legitimate concerns and up here what we try to do is we try to kind of listen to everybody's concerns and then weigh our options and then weigh the pluses and minuses and try to get something done and move something forward so i understand where you're coming from I definitely understand your frustration because I'm just equally as frustrated. So um, uh, as far as the Yorktown 100, I have a, I, I would love to come to that because it sounds really interesting. I have, um, uh, there's a fire, a fire district meeting that I have to go to on Thursday. So I'm going to try to get here. I might just pop in. So don't think I'm rude if I kind of like show up and leave, but I will try to get here. I got to figure out the timing and, um, and all of that. Mr. Dia. I, I didn't know that you cleaned all of that stuff up, yeah. and I want to yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, I mean I know that there's a lot of a lot of talk about your place, some legitimate points, you know. But but I'm glad you were here to explain what you did, and now I think what we could do is we could take what you said and we could take what other people say, and we could again, kind of find some kind of middle ground where everybody's happy. And, you know, you don't have to hear about it anymore. And, you know, it is what it is. And, but, but the cleanup that you did, especially the environmental impact that, that you removed, um, I want to thank you for that. Um, Ma'am, I apologize. I, I looked when, when you said you sent an email. I, 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 I looked around because I didn't get the email. It's, it's, it was in my spam. So I apologize for not responding to you. But... but Please, no I, I comments understand. from the public. I understand, ma'am, but, but I, I'm not, again, don't group us all together because we're all individuals here. So I did not, and that's what I'm trying to explain to you, and I'm apologizing because it got stuck in my spam and I didn't see it, okay? Because there's a million things in, in spam, and it's very hard to sift through. So, but otherwise I would have responded. Delicious. Okay? All right, that's all. Uh, thank you, guys. Okay. Uh, any other comments? Otherwise, we'll move on to public hearings. So we have got um, two public, uh, one decision here. And this is in regards to the sewer district extension for the Hallex Mill sewer district. Dan, do you want to just take the podium real quick for us? I'm sorry? Yes. Yes. So, Dan, do you want to just walk us through uh, the first... Res resolution here, just so we can be clear, because I know that there's this is this has been going on for quite some time, and uh, and we had a public hearing. Uh, Diana, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was last was it two last June two two Junes ago. Yeah, the original public hearing was um, July 6th. 15th day of June, and it was reconvened on July 6th and closed. And July 6th and closed. So again, this has been. Uh, one of those projects that we wanted to get all of our ducks in a row. We were working with a lot of partners on uh, the county and the federal level and the state level, and uh, and now we're finally at a point where we can take these important steps forward. Uh, so why don't you explain, just if you can, quickly uh, what the first resolution does? Well, basically, we're fulfilling the requirements of the, the state statute that dictates what you need to do to establish a special district. So we're sort of at the end game here. We now have all our funding in place, which is kind of key. We can't file our application until we've got commitments on all the uh, the funding that we need to make this happen. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, we now have secured the $10 million from the county and the additional uh, $1.2 million from Mondaire Jones. Yep, Congressman um, Jones and the federal government. Right. So, so now with all our partners, we, we've got a program that uh, will allow us to advance the application. So there's um, the resolutions you have tonight, really, I guess it's just this one decision which uh, lays out uh, the steps that we, we've taken. And it, it's sort of, a, I, I always found these as sort of cryptic resolutions, but it's a requirement of um, just the procedure yep. to, that we need to fulfill to, uh, uh, to establish the district. Now, Dan, just if we could, I, I, I don't want to belabor the point, but to be clear, this, the scope of the project has not changed. It's so again. it's the original that was that was uh, petitioned in 2019. Right. Same 350 315 parcels. parcels over in the Sparkle Lake area. Phase one of three for the sewer expansion. Right. That's the uh, the Birch area, the the Sparkle Lake area, yep. and the uh, Sunrise Street area. Right. So those are the three sub areas that we're uh, bringing sewers to in this phase. That's the objective. Questions from the board on that? Okay, then Sir? I will make a motion uh, to authorize that we make certain determinations in relation to and finding it to be in the public interest to establish a sewer district extension in the town of Yorktown, Westchester County, New York, to be known as the Halix Mill Sewer District Extension. Is there a second? So second. moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, Diana, you wanted that to be a roll call. Uh, roll call, roll call vote. Uh, sorry about that. And this uh, will be a roll call vote for both the um, making the certain determinations and also approving the establishment of the district. Is that correct? That is correct. Now, can okay. we do the? You want so then? Do you want us to do them? Okay. We do the, why, don't we, why don't we do the first? Call the roll for the first, and then we'll go to the second. Okay. Supervisor Matthew Slater. Aye. Councilman Tom Diana. Aye. Councilman Ed Lachterman. Aye. Councilman. Sergio Esperizito. Aye. And Councilwoman Luciana Howitt. Aye. Very good. That was our first roll call. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Dan, let's go to the next one. So this is um, approving the establishment of the Halix Mill Sewer District Extension. You want to walk us through uh, through that one? Again, it's, it's, it's really... Um Again, I've always found these confusing, but again, we're required to adopt these resolutions that basically lay out, um, you know, basically the, the points, the establishment of the Halix Mill Sewer Extension in the town of Yorktown. Um, the application for such approval is hereby authorized to be prepared, and the, the resolution will take effect immediately. Now, this one, the one that we're looking at now, is also authorizes us to be sent to the state comptroller, correct? Right, it's part of the... Can uh, you just explain why the state comptroller needs to be involved in the process? Just to make sure everyone's clear and understands sure. what's going on. So, so the, their involvement is um, they're sort of, um, in a way, protecting taxpayers' money, that we don't go rogue and establish a district that's going to cost way too much money and have an impact on people. So this whole package, um, we've done what's called the map plan and report, where we spell out what people are getting and how much it's going to cost them. And uh, that's why it was critical that we have the funding in place because we sent it up without that. Um, they would kick it back to us and say, well, that, that's great, but if you don't have the, the commitment and the money, how do we know right. that you can really afford to do this? Right. And then, so they're, and so the, so reason they're we... the watchdogs to make sure what we're doing makes sense and will be affordable to the uh, – the residents will be paying these taxes. Right, and we couldn't take this step until we had all the funding secured and understood, uh, whether it's the, really it was a $10 million, right, uh, but the, also while we were waiting on that, uh, on those parameters to be settled, we were able to secure the extra 1.2. So all that gets put in a package and gets sent up for the comptroller to review, uh, and that's what this resolution is going to allow. Correct. Okay. Then I'll make the motion that we approve the establishment of the Halix Mill Sewer District Extension. Second. So we'll take a roll call. Supervisor Matthew Slater. Aye. Councilman Tom Diana. Aye. Councilman Ed Lachterman. Aye. Councilman Sergio Esposito. Aye. Councilwoman Luciana Howitt. Aye. 
Very good. And I know it's been a long time coming on this project. This evening's a big milestone. This the thing is on its way. And it, you know, it's uh, several administrations, quite some time. Uh, but we're. It was the last, yeah, for, so first since the 1970s. That's, so it's been a long time, but we're very happy to be at this point. We, we understand and recognize the importance of the, of the project, and we appreciate everyone's collective hard work in, in getting us here. And uh, I'm just happy that we were able to take this, uh, this really needed step. So thank you all. All right, Dan, so we also now have the decision regarding Almeida. So since we found that typo we're going to eliminate that and we're going to well no i mean we are going to eliminate for, number that 5 that was there for a reason that right was, so number item five, 5 was for and us so we have a discussion on on if if the board wants to do that to the landscaping the landscaping to make that happen prior to uh, anything else well i th i mean i felt that was an important point um, i don't know if you guys have any thoughts on it uh, you know, as long as it's not something they're going to plant and then have to rip up and replant. Uh, yeah? No, I think, were, I, I think the only thing the applicant was trying to do, there was a retaining wall that he wanted to try and do through the winter. So uh, that argument is, sort is, of, is sort of isn't relevant down. anymore. So right. I think um, we'll just require the landscaping. Do we know but, if the retaining wall got done? Or? No, it did no, not we get didn't, done. We didn't permit it. So, so number five is going to change to? Planting. The landscaping shall happen prior to any other construction. Yep. They, in essence, I think is what you okay. say. I mean, this is a pretty long resolution here. I mean, did and um, do we? And do we? I mean, obviously, there's there's certain plants that drink more water than others. Like, it'll be specific to what type of plants. There, there was a, a landscaping plan that was part of the wetlands oh, okay. mitigation so plan. Yeah. You know, so. You know, that was part of the whole sort of correcting the sins here was for him to develop a mitigation plan yeah, to put the place back to together. I don't, I don't know if there were any other conditions the yeah. board wanted to, to add to this. No, that was the one that, condition that, that we had discussed concern. when the last yeah. time he was yeah, in. That was a neighbor's concern. And right. And okay. Right. And Joe Reina spoke on that, if I'm not mistaken, also right. that, for that concern. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So then we'll make a motion to approve the wetland. So moved. Second. Oh, you want a roll call on this one too? I'm joking. No, I'm joking. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Oh, there you go. Uh, we have Mr. Tegeter, you want to join us up front? Uh, we're going to reconvene the proposed local law to amend Chapter 300-81. Point four entitled solar power generation system and facilities. So while this is a reconvene, it's really our third public hearing uh, on the on the proposed amendments. Um, is there any comments from the public? Does anyone want to make a public comment on this particular topic? Please feel free to take the podium. Again, Susan Siegel. Um, I never mentioned it, but I just celebrated my 52nd year in Yorktown. Um, was Mr. Um, Tegner going to talk about any changes? Okay, I just want to make that clear. Okay. Uh, this is the third time that I'm talking at the, the hearing for solar amendments. And um, that's not counting the time that I spent in 2020 talking at the public hearing to adopt the solar law. Uh, plus also emails that I sent to this board both before the February 22nd hearing and after and after the March 22nd hearing and also letters to the editor and articles I've written on this issue. So clearly you can see that I have a concern about, about the solar law, right? Um, actually, I have uh, two concerns. We obviously have to do something to promote solar. I mean, that's just a given. There's no need to discuss that more but we also need to protect our disappearing woodlands. And I'm not going to go into all the importance of woodlands. I'm just assuming that you understand that. And if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to elaborate on that. Thank but you, unfortunately, um, as has been pointed out many, many times and by others, 
that the two goals are inconsistent. You can't have solar, with, and I'm talking about large-scale solar farms. You can't have large-scale solar farms without cutting down trees. I mean, that's just a given, all right? Um, I keep asking uh, the town board to consider amendments to the solar law that will deal with this conflict and to somehow achieve a better balance between the two laws. But uh, sadly, my comments, as well as the comments from others who also value the importance of solar, um, there's been no comment on the board. They've either been ignored or they've been the subject to a lot of misinterpretation and, dare I say, spin. Okay. Um, at the last public hearing, uh, the board proudly, um, well, well not, not just at the last meeting, but also at this meeting, um, you strongly talk that we have a, um, a strong tree law. Yes, we did, and I was worked very hard to get that, tree law, that strong tree law passed. But let's face it, words don't count. Actions count. The words are meaningless in the tree law when the spirit and the intent of the law is ignored as it is being ignored with when the town solar law allows 1,583 trees to be cut down to make way for solar, okay? So please, stop talking about we have a strong tree law. We all know that the tree law is not a prohibitive law. It allows trees to be cut down. So it's very easy to get a, a, a tree permit. So don't say you're abiding by the tree law. Earlier this evening, you passed a resolution supporting uh, announcing Arbor Day celebration. And, and, and the town board is very happy to be recertified as a tree city. So you value trees. And also the town is in the process of submitting a grant application to acquire a state application uh, to pay 90% to acquire an 18-acre woodland that they call a forest because the law is a community forest woodland. So isn't it ironic that while you're celebrating being a tree city and you're asking, you're asking the state to give you money to preserve a woodland, an 18-acre woodland, and because you're saying how important these woodlands are to the community, you have a solar law that's allowing you to destroy a 15-acre woodland. You're saving eight, you want to save the value of 18 acres on one point, on one hand, and then you go ahead and you have a law that allows you to destroy a woodland, a 15-acre woodland on the other hand. Uh, does the word hypocrisy somehow reach into people's minds about this? So once again, I'm asking the town board to postpone enacting these amendments until you've taken a more thorough look at the solar law, including possibly revising or replacing the current law with, instead of going by the special permit, you, you consider an overlay or a floating zone concept that would provide better protection for our residential neighborhoods. In my last email to you, I suggest you to take a look at the town of Austin, solar law, that again uses a floating zone concept. Now, Sergio and Luciana, you've inherited this law, so you don't know the history of it. But now you have a chance, okay, to take a look at this and ask the planning department and your town attorney to, to do what I asked you in that March 22nd email. Look at overlay law, floating district, flo overlay concept, floating zone concept, and special permit. And look at the pros and cons of each one. The standards could be the same, all right? But it's the protection for our residential neighborhoods that would be drastically, drastically changed if you, if you look at other options. And I'm not going to, it's not for me to give you a lesson on overlay laws. When I suggested the overlay concept or the floating zone concept two years ago because of a concern about residential neighborhoods, it was dismissed without just, it was just dismissed. A little while after that, the town suddenly woke up and, and adopted the concept of an overlay law to something else, more in, light, more in tune with what they were, were thinking. So I ask you to take the time. Also, at, last, at the last public hearing, I said, please don't rush that of the eight amendments that you're discussing in tonight's law, 
six of them, six of those issues can be dealt with during the planning board's current review. And the other two really don't count because one only deals with, with ground installations on, um, for homeowners and we're not dealing with that. The concern is with the large scale commercial ones. And the other one raised the, the, the minimum lot size for a commercial solar farm from two to five acres. But five acres, that's a meaningless change because it's not, going to, it's not cost effective for a developer to do a commercial farm on five acres. So the concerns that you have, and they are legitimate concerns, you don't need amendments to do that because the planning board could do that tomorrow as part of the conditions for any site plan approval under the special permit law that you already have. So I'm asking you, okay, to take your time. Don't rush, okay? You can accomplish your, the concerns that you have. Please look at this thoroughly. We have two years of experience. The planning board has seen the problems. I think you have seen the problems. Certainly people have spoken about the problems. And there are other ways to deal with this before it gets totally out of hand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eagle. Other comments? Mr. Strauss? I have a feeling, excuse me. Dan Strauss, I have a feeling Ms. Wilson won't uh, talk. I have a feeling Mr. Moskowitz probably won't talk. I think that's their decision. And I have a feeling <laughs> because um, I get it. We can't use commercial, Ms. Uh, I can't think of your name. Siegel. Because Mr. Diana said it's not commercial. It's not commercial. It's a large scale. It's not commercial because he got, he, you got um, from a very astute person on the planning board, it's not commercial. I just want to clarify some things. As it stands right now, the Foothill project will go through. Is that correct? You, you don't know? It's in the planning board right now, but that's, it's a free ride. You're not changing anything, if I understand, to prevent someone coming in and they have property rights. I understand. I'm not that uninformed. No, I, am nobody not, said you I am not that uninformed about this stuff. Now, I used to be about a year ago. I didn't know much about it at all. A property owner who has 30 acres and wants to cut down 3,000 trees on his property to put in a solar farm has the right to do it with permits. Is that correct? Yes, because you are nodding your head. Well, they have to go through the right process. They, yes. They have the right to do that. They have a right to engage in the process. That's correct. Go through the process. And if nothing is done to stop the process, that they adhere to all the things like Mr. Shanahan has said. And by the way, as far as I'm concerned, he is very impolite. And he has never been shut down by anybody in when he's talking. Never. He has, they have the right, that property owner, they can come in and cut down 5,000 trees on a property and go through the process. And I will make this comment because you have focused on the one project that the planning board stopped and they only stopped that project I know you're you're thinking about it wasn't a big to do but the person who wanted to do it would not conform to the planning board's wishes and Mr. Tegeter is in the back and I believe he can confirm that they chose not to conform and if they had conformed, that would have gone through too. It's all a matter of whether they conform. 
There is no restriction from the tree law or the wetlands law or any law as it stands right now. You have the 80-20. That's what I say. And that's fine. You were concerned about the little properties. And to your point, and I made this point earlier, you were concerned about the splatter, aren't you? The splatter. Now, you just look at that splatter when there are 30 acres of an in-ground solar system and the rains come pouring down. When the climate change brings us hurricanes and tornadoes and they will come down on those solar farms and they will flood out everything. You will flood out the Jefferson Valley, you'll flood out your town right here, and you'll flood out Foothill Street. And then all the people will wake up. They will wake up when their basements are all flooded. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Strauss. Just a clarification. I think John, you, John, you, you, gotta, you gotta go to the you gotta go to the mic and <coughs> Introduce just, yourself. Just a clarification. Dan said that, that there's never been a uh, wait. Introduce yourself. <clears throat> been anyone hurt uh, by by this any property owner? There was there was a fellow that had property right behind the um, the little st strip mall across from um, Elizabeth Van Seaton. Yeah. And and took down a whole bunch of trees without our permission, and the town jumped on him. And I think he either had to reforest it or he had to pay a heavy fine. Susan may remember when that sir, was. Sir, what's your name? You need to introduce yourself for the. Huh? You need to introduce yourself. John McMullen Edward. Thank, thank you, Mr. McMullen. Susan might remember then. It you, was John. You got John, direct. John you got direct to the John, you got a board. Yeah. First off, John, keep it to the board. John Tegeter, do you know which one he's talking about? I believe he's talking about a property that was on New Road. Yes. Is that correct? Uh, no, it was, it was across the strip mall behind, uh, across the there, and see, there's a bank in there. Yeah, but it wasn't at the strip mall, it was behind it, on yeah, the road that goes behind yeah, it. Yeah, it that's on the road. road. Yeah, yeah, right. That was right. maybe 12 or 15 years ago. Right. And yes, they clear cut and they got uh, violated and had to go through court. And I think they had some heavy fines, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you. Before, don't go too far. Any other comments? Thank you. I just want to follow up on, on something that uh, Dan Strauss said. Okay. Um, the problem with the current solar law that allows per, that the planning board, basically any residential property, uh, if it's a, again, I'm only talking about large scale. Mr. Diana is very concerned about the, the small scale, the, the, the ones on private, on a homeowner's put in their backyard. I'm not talking about those. I'm only talking about the large scale, the, co the commercial ones, right? Um, that can be on any residential property right now to, with a two acre minimum in one of your amendments of five acres, but as I said before, that really is not much of a change, okay? And the planning board, so it's any, any place, then the planning board issues a special permit if they meet the conditions. The problem with the current law is that those are conditions are minimal, okay? They are minimal, they're easy to meet conditions, like you have to have a buffer of a certain size, or um, I can't remember all of them, but they're minimal. And in my emails to you, I have suggested additional conditions that would be made to strengthen the law if you continue to go by the special permit route. So you could add more. For example, right now the planning board is not required to assess whether cutting down 1,583 trees on the Foothill property, how it will impact the function that those trees provide. Everything from, from drainage, from runoff, from recharging groundwater to abating noise, you know, 15 acres of trees abate noise, 15 acres of trees impact climate control, so you don't have to turn your air conditioner on that often, wildlife habitat, not to mention the aesthetics of a neighborhood. So there are all of those functions that there is nothing in the current law 
that requires the planning board to assess that. Finally, after many people brought this up at the planning board meeting with the foothill, very belatedly, very belatedly, okay, the planning board is now saying to the developer, you have to answer these questions. And now they're, they're going back and forth in terms of you have to give a decision X number of days after the public hearing. All right, and so we haven't heard yet from the developer whether he's gonna grant the planning board the extension, otherwise he could force the issue. But without strengthening the conditions in the law, okay, that, that's what you need to do. You have to strengthen the conditions. And I have outlined them so I don't have to go through them now. Mm -hmm. You have them on paper, if you've read the paper, I have to say. I am sorry if I'm being disrespectful when I say that. I just opened it All right. again. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that was, not, that was probably in, in my February you know, memo. That's All right. where I went. <laughs> then the separate issue is whether you go by special permit, because if they meet the conditions, and, and the town attorney can, can, can confirm what I'm saying. As long as you meet the conditions, the planning board really has no choice but to approve the permit. Otherwise, you really are opening yourself up to a lawsuit. Okay? So you have to have strong conditions. Otherwise, the, you know, it, it gets done. The reason I'm suggesting, and I think Paul Moskowitz suggested this at the last hearing, that you do an, either an overlay law or a floating zone law, and that's to protect the residential neighborhoods. So instead of saying everything over two acres or whatever acres you put down is, is eligible by special permit, making it difficult for the planning board, then they have to say, have you met all these conditions? Floating zone or overlays would say, only certain things, you have to come in and apply to go into this, just like the agricultural district overlay that we have in the, zone, in, the, in the current zoning law, or even in the overlay law that you just passed for Yorktown Heights and Osceola, where the applicant, even if they're in the overlay district, they have to come to the town board and show specifically for this specific project that it makes sense, because it may make sense to cut down a lot of hundreds of trees on a certain site but it also may not. So the town board has more control over where these large-scale commercial installations would be. And that's the reason for taking a, a, a look and revising the law. You could have the very same conditions that you would put in, but doing an overlay or floating zone gives the town board more control and doesn't blank say any, any residential property throughout the town. So that's why I urge you, you have two issues. You have the stronger conditions, and then you have the basic framework of how to apply the law. And again, there is no rush, so do the job since we have two new board members, okay, um, that it gives you a chance to take a look at this and ask your planning director to give you, and your town attorney to give you this analysis, okay? And understand, these are difficult concepts. It took me years, many, many years, before I learned the difference between all of them, all right? And you're new at this, so I'm asking you, take the time because there is no rush. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? <clears throat> no. Looks like Mr. Strauss lost the bet. <laughs> <laughs> Backed by popular demand. <laughs> this is Paul Moskowitz. And <clears throat> I have a few additional points to make, but essentially my position has not, been, has not changed. It is sheer foolishness to cut down a forest for whatever reason, including producing a solar farm, because the trees store carbon. The solar farm offsets the production of carbon. So it does that. Except you have to think, those trees have been standing there for 50 years or 100 years, and they've stored up that much carbon in the ground, in their branches, in their roots. And it will take years for even the most efficient solar farm to catch up with the carbon that you're liberating when you cut down a forest. I've heard somebody get up and say, don't remember who, that 
you can't do solar without cutting down trees. You can't do large scale. And that's what we're talking about, large scale. Not individual homeowners putting solar collectors on their roofs or in their backyards. I'm all for that, and I don't care how it looks. I don't mind if my neighborhood looks uh, futuristic, because I know it's helping to save the planet. And it's also offsetting fossil fuels, which we have come to find out re require a worldwide supply, and we're vulnerable. If we want to stop the madman from Russia from furthering his genocide, we're in a tough position because Europe needs his fossil fuels. So I heard it said that you can't do solar without cutting down trees. And I can give you two examples off the top of my head in Yorktown. One is IBM is installing a large-scale solar system over their acres of parking lot. This requires some trees, incidentally, to be cut down, but in general, very few. The other is the Arcadia Farm, which happens to be in my neighborhood. It's in Huntersville. I've heard a lot of people talk about their hometowns. I don't think of Huntersville as a hometown. I think of it as a community. But it was a town all by itself before the town of Yorktown sucked it up. <laughs> and people in my community of Huntersville have often talked about whether we would be better off seceding from the town of Yorktown and going back to the mid-1700s when the town was founded. But nonetheless, we have had an approval for a large-scale solar farm on the Ar Arcadia uh, premises, unused, mostly unused agricultural area. This is around the corner from me. And I and the other directors of the Huntersville Association met on the site and examined the site, and we decided this was fine. First of all, they're, they're cutting down a few trees, but not very many. And again, this is a good use for unused farmland. So you can do it. You can, do, uh, you can produce large-scale scale solar farms uh, without cutting down a lot of trees. The last thing you want to do is what the Foothill Project proposes, which is to take, I think, 1,400 acres and cut down almost 2,000 trees. Contrary to popular opinion, meaning what you've heard previously during other hearings, they could build a housing development which would not be as damaging. We used to have a, 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 an attorney for developers, and whenever anybody opposed his development, development, he said, well, we'll put a bank there, as though a bank were the worst thing in, possible in the world. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us but his cultural center is still with us. So the threat was a bank. I don't know what's so bad about banks. <laughs> I, I use one myself. But um, I think we should think, rethink this Foothill Project. I know it was written, going back to the history of this law, it was written with the cooperation of Mr. Shanahan and uh, his employees. They worked with John Tegeter. At one point, following some of my remarks, I should be thrilled that people listen to what I say, but he wrote a letter to the town board and to the planning board in which he was quite specific that he did not want to give up putting solar farms in residential areas. That would spoil his plan. And that he and his fellows at his company have worked for years with the planning board to write the law. When it came up before the previous administration, there were 100 people who filled town hall to object to it because they didn't want to see the forest cut down. Unfortunately, we were, those people have stayed home because of, since, because of the pandemic. Mm. We don't have that mass protest. However, once you start cutting down the trees in mass numbers, people will notice. 
and they'll come back to the planning board, they'll come back to this board. On the, on the subject of how the law was written, so there was a public hearing on, on the, a version of the law which was very much like the version of the law that this planning board, that this town board passed. But that town board did not do it. Mr. Shanahan was upset. And meanwhile, the company that he worked for went out of business. How can you make, how can you go out of business when you're delivering a product which you get for free? Well, maybe he was doing the same thing in other towns that he wanted to do in Yorktown. And at the public hearing before the previous administration, Mr. Shanahan made a lot of statements, including one that he would sue the town board if he didn't get his law passed. He gave up on that, and in fact, he apologized. But he has stopped, he has not stopped being as aggressive. He's told the planning board, as long as I meet the zoning requirements, you can't stop me. And he may have a point there, if Mrs. Siegel is correct. So there is a problem. And the problem does not exist for all solar development. IBM is doing it right, Arcadia Farm is doing it right, but the Foothill Project is not doing it right. And eventually people will wake up and they'll come back to this board and protest in large numbers. But meanwhile, Mr. Shanahan will get his uh, project done and he will move out of town. His previous company went out of business, Con Edison bought up the rights that he had. And we all know how much we love and respect Canada's. <laughs> I've heard, incidentally, that we're uh, circulating a petition to stop Canada's from <laughs> raising it, its rates. So we can certainly trust Con Edison to do the right thing. So I just want to say that I'll, I'll go back to where I started. Having a law which allows you to cut down forests to install large-scale solar farms is foolish, and we shouldn't do it. Thank you, Mr. Moskowitz. Thank you, Mr. Moskowitz. Any other comments? <coughs> Discussion for the board? John, you want to come back up and join us? You know, I think it's a complicated issue when we hear it. And I understand it. I think this town board recognizes it, which is why we're still trying to get it right, still trying to plug away at it. I think it's an emotional issue. I don't find it complicated. I think it's very emotional. I think people come at it with a lot of emotion. Um, I don't well, I agree think. with a lot of the things that some people have uh, stated. Mm -hmm. Some of them I find incorrect. Some of them I find not fully thought out. But certainly I understand that it is an issue that brings up a lot of emotion about it. I mean, honestly, uh, I agree with you because we, we've been called hypocrites tonight, uh, among other things, but we'll, we won't go backwards. Um, we, we, yeah, I'll stay focused. We've been called, it's, we're hypocritical if we try to save land, and we're hypocritical if, if, if we, we're, we, we have these solar projects that came in before we, we're trying to strengthen the law. Um, people have crystal balls. They know whether or not I read comments or not. I, I mean, if, if somebody could give me, on, if, look in their crystal ball and give me the lotto numbers, I'll hit the lotto tomorrow, I'll buy all the land, and I'll plant more trees, and we'll leave all the trees. I mean, if you guys know the lotto numbers, as you know whether I read something or not, I would appreciate the lotto numbers, because then I'll buy all the land, and we'll keep all the trees. You know? We, we, we've been told that it's been a rush. This is the third public hearing on strengthening the law. From what I understand, and from what you said in a previous meeting, that there are studies that show, because I was apprehensive, of course, as I said earlier, uh, about, about solar. And you had said that there are studies that show, because I, I, I looked at it as a one-to-one -one cancellation. You're knocking down trees to put solar in, 
You're getting rid of one good thing to put another good thing in, and you know your net gain is zero. But you explained to, to me uh, that it is not a net gain is zero, that solar actually has a, a positive net gain yes. as a, in lieu of knocking down the trees. In terms right? of this carbon sequestration, yes, correct. that's correct. And, and by the way, all, all of the solar applications that we have had and some that have been approved, some that are not, uh, have not been voted on yet, have done that calculation for their specific uh, application, uh, including Foothill, which seems <clears> to be <throat> the one that everyone's uh, very upset about. Foothills comes out in the same way that I described, in that the amount of carbon sequestration that the trees that are to, to be taken down can hold is far less than the offset that the same amount of solar panels in that same area will remove in terms of having to generate electricity with fossil fuels. So it's a, it's a in that regard, it's a gain uh, in terms of helping the environment as it regards the carbon issue. Um, you know, uh, in terms of the, uh, the issue of providing solar and clean en energy from a broad sense, I think we all feel, even people that do not like the Foothill uh, project, that we should be doing solar. And that's the starting point. The state wants to do a certain level that they are requiring to be done by, I think it's 2030, like 80 megawatt, uh, 80, whatever it is. It's, it's a large number. You know, we should all be participating, all of us. Uh, and I think that's the starting point for some of the deliberations that you have to go through and that you've gone through when this uh, was first enacted. That's exactly right. When it was first enacted, that's yeah. where our focus was, right. was being active participants in, in the goals put forth by the state right. when it comes to renewable energy. Yes. And, you know, there were some comments about how this is all focused, or maybe they, maybe they appear to be focused on one project. But we're trying to look at a broader a broader scope. Now, yes. when we started this conversation, Councilman Diana, it was because there was a, you had a concern as it related to the single family homes because there was that one incident, right? Yep. Off of Jordan. Was it Jordan? Jordan. Off of Jordan, Jordan Drive. Jordan Drive. Where you had someone install solar panels in their backyards and their neighbor perceived it as an eyesore. Correct. And then, then that brought us up into the bigger units and so forth and um, I had to correct my wordage when I was t you know when I was talking about the ground mounted solar panels that you know they weren't industrial because industrial gives you the the aura of smoke and noise and machinery and stuff like that right Jim yes it does okay well it's industrial looking uh, how's that um, I don't like ground array ground mounted solar anywhere um, where it can't be hidden um, the trees there has to be a balance right right uh, you know right. And, and and I think this is what we're trying to achieve here is a gentle balance between what the state wants to achieve what we want to achieve what people want to see what people don't want to see um, and like I said, this all got started from a resident down in, well, one of the reasons was one of the, as, a, as a resident down on Jordan right. that, you know, had a, a solar, um, had a bunch of solar panels put, or he, I'm sorry, his neighbor had a bunch of solar panels put in his backyard, and he was, he was very upset about it, and I, I, I can understand why. So that's when we started this whole conversation and started this new process. Um, as it relates to residential. As it relates to residential. To, to limit the residential impact. Right. And even now, I think that also helps strengthen what the planning board does with regard to large scale. Mm -hmm. So there so, are, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, so it's, it, it's a process. It's going to be an evolving process, I think, um, because the only thing we had to go on when the onslaught of, of solar came to us was NYSERDA. There's the only, only, only. Um, Their model ordinance. Model ordinance and 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 plan. That was, that that was our foundation. Go, yeah. Right. And then we expanded. You know, we we expanded on that, and now 
we're expanding and tightening it up again for at right. least residential, up to five acres, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, it's it's still it's still evolving. And we have to find that gentle balance between trees and solar and compliance and what people like and what people don't like. So it's 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 a tough it's possible. It's it's a yeah, tough it's juggling. A tough, it's a tough it's a, exactly right. It's a juggling act. So as far as the law goes, uh, the that we're talking about tonight, that the amendments to the law. It makes the law stronger. Yes? It makes right. <clears throat> it makes the conditions more restrictive, yes. Okay. So it's a step in the right direction. That's what we're all talking about, right? It's not the final iteration, may or may not be the final iteration, but we're taking the, the corrective steps to ensure that we're going to from, from to up to five acres and according to our controller, what did she say? She said that it, it eliminates, uh, who said that? Our assessor. Yes. Our assessor, I'm sorry. Um, that it, 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 it effectively restricts what? 80%. 80% of the properties in town residential. from being uh, residential, residential, from residential the, properties. Yes. From being developed into solar. From so ha From having the ground mount, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Large right. scale. From, so from, no, 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 large scale. You can have the ones on the roof. They just can't have the ones on the ground. Well, large scale, we only yeah, have I a know. few large properties. Yes. I, right. And, and, yeah. and, that's, and that's the other point. There aren't many other properties that have already, that don't already have their application in that would even qualify or, or move forward with something like that. So, uh, I mean, the law, the, the law and the amendments as we're looking at it is a step in the right direction. It might not be the end all, be all, everything that everybody wants to see all of that in a bag of chips, but it is something that's better, right? I mean, this is what we're talking about. What, what, yeah, we talk uh, about what kind of chips? I go barbecue. Barbecue? Yeah. Um, no, I like the sweet and sour, the, 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 the uh, beer, right? yeah. Anyway, right. so, I mean, so the law does, does improve on the, the amendments, I'm sorry, does improve on the existing law. John, can you speak to, can you speak to the, um, there's some comments made about flooding severe detrimental flooding I got nervous you did yeah it sounded really bad yeah can you explain to me when they go through when the planning board and you or your department goes through an application what steps are taken to understand the potential impact of flooding when it comes to these types of projects mm -hmm. any development project specific well any, any development I understand what you're saying has to do or I should say has to comply with the stormwater regulations mm -hmm. of the state and our local stormwater regulation mm -hmm. which if I were to say the hallmark of our uh, local one is that in an undeveloped condition there's a certain amount of runoff that comes off the site it, express it in gallons if you want the post-development condition cannot exceed that. So we cannot make any of the natural conditions worse than the conditions are as an undeveloped site. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the standard and the benchmark. All of them go through that. Regardless Mo of the type of development, whether it's of solar, of development. housing, correct. you build the Empire State Building, it doesn't matter, you still got to right. go through and make sure that you're complying with the stormwater. That's correct. That's why you will see on any of the stormwater developments, at least I believe every single one that we've seen so far, including Foothill, has stormwater infrastructure proposed to handle that engineering problem. Right. Okay. So it's, a, it's an engineering problem, and any of the developments that we see, whether it's a commercial development with a lot of impervious surface, a residential single-family development with a mix of, of, of uh, impervious and pervious, but nevertheless, a change in the vegetative cover. Uh, what we see is much of the work that the applicant must do in some manner relates to that issue, to the stormwater issue. They have to figure out how to build the road, of course, but they also have to figure out all the water that lands on the road, where it's going to go, mm -hmm. how it's going to be captured, how it will be treated, and how it will be eventually Can you say released. that again? I just, that's a really important point that I think I want to make sure... <laughs> The public really should understand. So say that again. 
Exactly. The exactly. Same thing. Say it again. <laughs> And because I don't think people realize, I don't, my point tape. being is, I don't think people realize the due diligence that goes into the stormwater management <laughs> systems yeah. for every type of development in this town. And, and so it's easy to sit here and say that you're going to flood out all of Jefferson Valley, but here's the proof that that's not the case because of what they have to comply with, which, again, is the law. Yes. So it's not like a customizable menu that we're saying, well, you don't have to do stormwater if you do tree. No, no, no. You have to comply with the laws. You have to comply with all of the laws. None are uh, exempted from uh, being looked at by the solar law or any other law. So, I just, I just want to bring up, like, I think, I think what we're, we're doing here, we're like being, so we're being incredibly literal to everything, but I think what we have to understand is that the, the solar power does bring us this at level of energy, but the trees do more than just manage the carbon right so mm -hmm. there are people that are going to be aware of that and that's something that we are losing right by by doing this and visually although i'm kind of with moscow in the sense of like futuristic is great because there is a purpose there i also understand that you should have a buffer and some visual aspects because we do want to respect our neighbors and planting more vegetation is not an eyesore so like you know planting some more trees and that landscaping is not mitigation planting hydrangeas does not replace what how you know certain river trees or whatnot hold the ground and as much as we we're moving forward and there's a lot of give and take and I hear the of the give and take and I'm also concerned about the, the storm water even because I have my knowledge in my business with all the prevention in the world and if the world, if earth erosion does certain things, things happen, right? So I, I recognize that. I also recognize that with ground mountings, there's mountings, and that means that things are going to rust, or things are going to come undone, or they're going to add iron to the ground, and, and like there's a lot of prevention that goes around this. And I just want to preface that it has been discussed that like what is the woodlands is different than just talking about a tree. There's like a whole bunch of magic that happens there, and I, I just I want to bring up that. We have sat and talked about that, and yes, it's sometimes it's, it's more of a sacrifice, and we hope that there's a gain, but we understand there's a sacrifice, and we understand that visually and aesthetically, and I know this for myself with you know Councilman Tommy Diana, they're not pretty. They're not designer. These large mounts are not designer, and yes, 80% are under five acres, but there are 20% that are not that could decide to use some of their backyards and their residential as hosting commercial solar. So let's put that out there too. Like it can happen. And I do think that it's important that we do recognize that all of these have been discussed, how to tweak them to make the, the law stronger. Um, I guess it's using the right words. Um, I don't think that, I think the planning board yeah. has good guidance. It's just using the right words. And I, I look to Adam on that. And but I do want to bring up that like, these have been. I don't. I want. I know we're being literal, and, we're, and it's ten o'clock, and we're all trying to get through this. But there are so many, like different shapes and sizes and concerns and ideas that are going around this, and I don't want to overlook. When we, and I don't want to be insensitive to anyone that when we discuss it, like as if it's not a real thing. And Yorktown is really, really beautiful, and its trees are ninety percent of the reason why. But it's wet. And there's water running everywhere, so there's that too. And we can't afford life. We can't afford things if we don't move into the going green. We just, it's just not going to work. We have to be, we have to be economical. And as from what Mr. Moscow said, we need our planet to be here so that we can exist. So I just, I just wanted to preface that because I do know how much work you guys are going through and testing. And I remember what the drilling looks like to see how high the water comes up and how deep you have to go. And if you hit bedrock and what happens when you have to put pipes around bedrock. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into it. And I don't want to depreciate anyone. But I also understand that in the woodlands, there's magic and there's, there's a habitat and there's, you know, growth and there's story. And um, our trails are built within them. And there's just a whole bunch of other stuff. So. Yeah. The, um, to to, to, to uh, Luciana's point and to your point, John, but taking to what Mr. Uh, Moskowitz and Mr. Strauss had said some time ago, there was a solar company that came in here, and I don't remember who it was. And they did say, because, and I believe it was uh, Mr. Moskowitz that brought it up first, and, and he's correct. And I think it was for the project that was going to go on Underhill, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 
that it was going to be possibly on the side of a hill and the sheeting action of the water and so on and so forth. When they were asked, how are you going to mitigate the water? Oh, we're not. We're not going to. You won't have a problem. They were in error with that. Uh, I would say. <laughs> they were wrong um, with that. I mean, I, 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 I it, it, and Tom, I, I, I want to re also remind everybody that a, lo a large um, issue with that one was the view shed in particular right. from Turkey Mountain. Right, 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 right. So. right. But I, I'm just talking about the the yeah. the, the watershed, um, w which I still feel is going to be a major problem. Um, I mean, we have them going certain places that it could possibly wash out and wash down onto a road. Yes. I mean, it, it and it happens with. Out them being there. erosion and stormwater issues are very important, and as I said, they're very important with any development on any piece of property. Mm -hmm. That property that you're discussing has development potential for single-family uh, development. That will change the the stormwater management quality of the natural state of that hill, mm -hmm. and and you will have the same issues of dealing with that. Maybe more so because there will be more impervious surface if, if, if a development could happen there. So I think we have to remember in terms of stormwater and in terms of tree removal and any other impacts that just as we spoke about a minute ago that all of development needs to go through and comply with those laws, all of those developments have the potential to have impacts and remove trees as well. I just hope so, that I'm sorry. Jim. Yeah, I, I don't. Th I don't think. I don't think you can really intelligently talk about the impact of the solar law on the tree cover on particular properties without talking about the impact of all development potential in the town of Yorktown and its impact on tree cover, trees, and forested areas. It's as important. I don't think it's more important because it's a solar project. I think it's as important. And so if you go down the road, and, and I think you have to keep in mind that when you want to strengthen the idea of tree removal vis-a-vis -vis the solar law, you really must do it for all of your development laws. Right. And I don't know that the tree law is in such a state that it's not handling that already. Right. right. And the storm prevention, I mean, you know what contractors have to do. To, to make sure that with their impervious purpose, uh, surfaces and so forth that it's channeled and directed in the proper manner yeah. and goes into, whether it goes into retention ponds or goes into uh, um, other ways of distributing that water throughout, um, that, that the solar is held accountable to the same standards. Yeah, and it, and and it, it is. is. You know, that's, that's, that's the main thing that it has to be. Like I say, I haven't heard anybody talk about that with the solar stuff that one guy that had come in that one company had come in says, oh no it, it, it won't do that it won't do that. nothing to wash out we're not going to do anything with that. you know <laughs> they all say that Tom. yeah oh yeah, yeah. there's going to be no problem with anything there's no problem so. So, if i if i may say as someone who sat as a liaison for the planning board and heard way many of this as we fast light these projects, which I hate to see what happen if we slow down, I don't, I don't know if anyone would be around when, when they pass, uh, as this is going on for years. Um, there's a lot of balance in it, and you know it's, it's funny because I heard a lot of talk about, well, we're looking to save 18 acres at the expense of 15 acres, which really wouldn't be 15 because you have to <coughs> preserve your your border anyway. But what I didn't hear is, hey, we're looking to save over half of 33 acres. Yes. You know, so there's a balance, and there's a balance in everything. And, you know, as, as we look to become more dependent on electrical energy, whether we're, whether, or solar energy, whether we're ready for it or not, um, you know what, we have to figure out how to produce that energy. And there has to be the balance, and I'll, and I'll say just from my uh, two and a half years uh, sitting with the planning board, uh, I think you guys really take this seriously, take it into account, and commend the job you've been doing. Thank you. Other questions or comments from the town board? No. Anything for John? No? Well, what do you, what's the town board? What do you guys think? Do you guys want to, we can, we can close, we can. I think we're ready to close. If, you we, know. Can, we can adjourn and just. I, I, yeah, I, well, no, I would say uh, we could close and then 
give Sergio and Lucian an opportunity to talk with planning and with. Yeah, but if we close and we're going to give them that opportunity, I just. Uh, if they have any questions. I, I'm sorry, uh, Sergio and Luciana? For if you wanted to talk with Adam or John about any of the you solo have any law additional questions and, and the tree to law and how they right. interact. Yes, Mr. Strauss. Yeah, you want to come up? Mr. Tegeter, um, I guess I'm, even though I'm facing this way, I'm addressing uh, Mr. You, Tegeter. You address the board. But I mean, I asking, well, I'm uh, referencing Mr. Tegeter. Gotcha. Come on, reference, come on. There you go, reference. Gee, referencing. Uh, okay. you, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Please continue, Mr. Strauss. Um, no one knows what's going to happen when you have 15 acres of solar. And it is in residential areas. There is no separation, as far as I'm concerned, between residential and commercial. You are invading residential areas Residential means homes. It's not the same as commercial or farm. That's my opinion. I know Mr. Tegeter made the comment that it's emotional. Yeah, maybe I talk emotion, but I'm, I'm dead set on what I'm saying. And Mr. Tegeter made the comment that he's heard a lot of things or some things that are incorrect. I don't think I'm incorrect in bringing up, maybe I've, I've said some things that he doesn't agree with or are incorrect, but if you put 15 acres of solar in ground in a residential area, you have no idea as of right now even with the structural stuff that you have to do to mitigate the water. You don't know what's going to happen in those residential areas because you don't have any now. There's a gentleman who writes into the newspaper, Bob DeAngelis. He says, why don't you put it on all new buildings? Why don't you expect that all new buildings have solar on their rooftops. That's a way to get solar energy into the town. If I'm not mistaken, those are in commercial areas. You are invading residential. That's the point that I just can't get. You're cutting down trees, and I understand there's Mr. Shanahan. Esposito. Oh. You say it's a wash. That's what you say. It's a wash. So then why would you cut the trees down? If it's a wash, why would you cut the trees down to put in the solar? And you have no idea what the solar is going to generate. If it is a wash... I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying. That's what, you made that comment. I did it's, several you've times. The, you made the comment. It's a wash. So if it's a wash, why would you cut the trees down to put in solar? Did, did you hear uh, Mr. Tegeter that, I did. that it's I'm, not a wash? I, I that, understand, that, but it's in a residential area. Right. That's what I'm getting at. I'm if sure. it's a wash... Why, and I still say that this comes down to whether it's, tr it's solar or housing. It's solar or housing. That's part of the deal here. And you want to give people who want to use their property some use. That's what this solar law has done on the large scale. You have three properties three foothill i'm not focusing just on foothill i'm focusing right across the street on strawberry there's one coming in and there's another one in jefferson valley 
You want to accommodate those people, and you want to accommodate people who are going to come in here and want to do large scale in residential areas. That's what you are doing, and unless you change it, I understand you've given it great thought, and it's the third hearing, and whatever you do is okay with me because you're the guys up there. But there is a difference between commercial use and residential use. And if I am incorrect, Mr. Tegeter, he's the guy, you correct me. And you have a lot of means to go into commercial areas to put solar in. Many, many choices. As far as I'm concerned, and I read the local papers, and I read and I call other towns, and that can be done. So that's what I am trying to get at. There is a difference. And residential means, to me, housing. And there is always the, we need housing here. We need housing. We need solar, too, yeah. But put it in commercial areas. To Mr. Moskowitz's point, there's plenty. IBM's commercial. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chef. Just a quick uh, response to Janet's question to Sergio about if it's a wash, why would you do the solar? Because the solar has, has proven common good down the line for our children and other things. So it, if it's even up, you go with the one that has the long-term benefit. If it's not even up, then you go with the one that's up on top. Thank you, John. Uh, is, is the hearing still open? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm only going to say one thing, because I want to correct a misstatement, because I'll probably, if I'm motivated enough, and I might be by tomorrow morning, I'll send you another email for you to read. Um, I'll be happy to read it once okay. again. Okay. Um, the statement was made about the 80%. This is only, you're protecting 80%. If I remember the statement that was made <clears throat> last hearing, it was 80% of the properties are zoned less than one acre. Mm -mm. That's what... That's, I think, what was said, yeah. all right? All right, because the property could be zoned half an acre and it could still be a 15-acre parcel and it could still be eligible. No, 80% of residentials of residentially zoned property would be excluded from large-scale solar. Why? Because of the acreage size? Because of the acreage size. 80%. Majority, if you look at the, look at the, uh, the zoning map, majority of Yorktown... There are smaller is, lots. Majority is developed, which is makes it that much more important to save what we have. And one other residential property to get back to, to Mr. Strauss and Mr. Moskowitz. Um, and I don't think it's been discussed here, but this property um, down 100, roughly opposite Traveler's Rest, okay, that was initially proposed and rezoned for a, an adult community back in 2000. 2011, the, the, the approval lapsed, and the developer and his attorney came in and mm -hmm. wanted to revise it, and the town board was very pleased, you know, with having seniors 55 and over, you know, even though it's closer mm -hmm. to Millwood than it is to Yorktown Heights, they may come into Yorktown Heights and spend some money, and as I think Dan just said, yeah, you want people because people bring, bring mm -hmm. our customers for our businesses. He was approached by a solar company, and I think he's decided to go solar. Would you like to see a solar application down 100, okay, that nice residential section? Actually, the planning board already reviewed it, didn't it? No. They introduced he, he it to the planning in. board. He, he had, it, they, in, they had an introductory meeting with the planning board, and the planning board gave it high marks. No, I don't think it's coming. Absolutely. When did... A year ago. With, for the new owner? Yes. Yes. I don't even. Yeah. Then, then that's one of the meetings that, that I missed. But he has. He has. You never miss a meeting. Stop. Well, I must have missed one. <laughs> you meeting. never miss All a right. meeting. I can't Susan. believe it. And, and you talk. And she you has talk. Missed three in my oh, 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 But I will send you an email tomorrow 
with some of the other points. And, and um, Siana, thank you very much for some of the comments that you made about the functions, because that's, that's one of the stronger issues that is not included. And has the town board seen the memo that the, plan, that the conservation board addressed to the planning board regarding Foothill? If you just take Foothill out of the equation, okay, and just look at that generically, okay, there was nothing in the current solar law that required the planning board to look at all of those potentially lost functions that would have resulted that the conservation board belatedly had to bring up and ask the planning board to do. So all I'm asking is put that requirement in now while you're take once you pass this law, come on, let's face it, you're not gonna start looking at the law again in another month, all right? It's done, it's gonna be done for a long time. So again, take the time and I'll get back to my computer tomorrow morning. Okay. <laughs> we look at everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we did look at the functions of that forest on Foothill. And the, our environmental consultant yep. has not rated it very high, nor does the state rate it very high. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the functions, a lot of the things that were raised were habitat or stormwater, which we just talked about the stormwater, which is handled through the stormwater uh, law. And it is mitigation for that function. Okay, so it is mitigation for that function. Um, so <clears throat> the uh, environmental consultant has also embarked on a supplemental memo, which they just finished. So, you know, clarifying some of the points because the points keep being, uh, you know, talked about and reiterated. So the planning board asked them to go back and relook at things, not because they hadn't done it or thought about it, but because they are listening to the public's comments and want right. to make sure that their answers that they are gaining are as complete as they can be. So. Right. That is the reason for those uh, events happening. Do you think we'll have that soon? It's, I got it today. Oh, great. Okay. In terms of, um, I just want to speak a little bit to the use and the use categories and so forth. So, uh, first of all, all infrastructure, whether it's communications, electrical, water, sewer, is allowed everywhere in the town by, by necessity specifically called out, You'll, you will find transfer stations, uh, transformer stations, uh, you will find uh, telephone buildings, you will find towers for mobile communications everywhere. And this is in the same vein as that. In terms of, and of course all those things as we know are commercial entities and commercial uh, endeavors. As far as uh, the residential zones on their own, farms are also have a commercial aspect to them. Mm -hmm. And I will mention, I'm not gonna mention it by name, but there's one farm here that in a particular season has thousands, mm -hmm. thousands of visitors mm -hmm. in, the, in the space of two or three months on a small, narrow, and I'm going to call it an ancient road because it's not, it was, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an old trail that was here had, back in the day and it wasn't built out n right. normally. You know what, where I'm talking yeah, about. We had a farm, yeah. we had a yes. farm that had over, I think you said over 3,000 people just last weekend. Okay, so. so and John, I, I will also point out that, you know, the, the comment was made about the 50 years of trees. I believe that was you, Mr. Moskowitz. I actually had someone come and say to me, you know, these forests grew in approximately 50 years, so we should leave that farm alone and let it become a forest. So you just get, yeah. you, there's just, uh, there, for, every, for every one item, there are like 120 different opinions. Right. And it's, it gets scary. And you, and you can do, you can do a farm under our code. You can do a farm under, under the state protections because there's a lot of protection for agriculture endeavors. So you can, you can also, and we have one that was approved with the, as this, with, the, with a farm as a component uh, to remove trees in order to do farming. So that can be done. Uh, that's a tree removal right. activity. It's also 
a commercial activity. Um, you, in our residential zones, you can do mining and extraction. You can take out gravel and other types of natural material in the residential zones with a special permit. Okay. I wouldn't call it necessarily residential use, but those things happen because of certain necessities that were talked about decades ago and right. have matured over the years. Okay. So I just want to keep the, the essence of what we're talking about really at what the heart of what it truly is. Right. And John, how many of our commercial properties, I know our light industrial borders Summit Street, how many of them, how many of them border residential? Because I when, when when they were mentioning that I was thinking in particular about the old temple property, which is commercial across from Lowe's, but it's literally right on top of the neighborhood. Said so uh, is our engineer unless he snuck yeah. out got to okay because he, like, he lives down that way. Yeah. So yeah, all, all of our you know not all of our commercial, but a lot of our commercial in particular the ones that are uh, fronted on a single road often have some abutment to residential areas. It's a, it's a common situation that we deal with all the time. Right. You know, those developments actually have uh, palpable impacts. Yes. Palpable impacts, you know, noise, smoke, uh, odors, um, pollution, runoff, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, the, the good thing about solar, other than that it produces a clean energy, is that it has very, very low impacts as compared to almost any other development that you can think of. That's, that's a positive in, in, in this yeah. situation. So. I'm going to go back to the board. Any comments, questions? Where, where's everyone's heads at? Can we make a motion to close the public, well, or adjourn the public hearing, or we have to wait till comments? Wait for comments for what? From the, from the board. No, we can. I mean, well, I want to see what the board wants to do before we make a motion. I'm fine with adjourning, uh, and I'm fine with, with closing. But well, I'm trying to figure out everyone's comfort level. Yes. So. What do you think, Serge? No, I think, um, I think it's time to close it. I think uh, nothing precludes us from coming back. I don't know if we close it. I, we can always go back into the law and amend it again, right? Yeah, I mean, we can okay. always, yeah. Well, that, do so that's thing. what I'm saying. So, so. I think we've, we've listened to the public, we've read comments, we've done everything. I, I, at this point, I think due to the fact that we kind of weren't looking and we got these large-scale projects that, 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 that are here now, that there's really nothing we're going to be able to do about, I say we, we strengthen the law now, so this way we, we exclude 80%, if not more, of the properties in Yorktown. And we do that now before something else comes in within the next couple of weeks or something like that. And then they're grandfathered in. Yeah, that's a good point. So the time, now, the time is now, let's, let's get it on the books. And then if, if, if we're going to go back into it, we could go back into it. We could start all over again. And we could build on what we already have. Because if something else comes in, <coughs> in between us point. hanging around and, 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 and dragging it out, that's a good point. then we're going to all be upset about it. I know I will. Well, it's happened over the last two and a half years. I'm not a. I'm. I'd like to hold on it. I don't want to close, um, just because I do feel like there are. I don't want to do it again, and I've only been doing it for a few months, <laughs> um, and I just. I think that it's important. I think tonight just was really impactful. I just think it's important that like, we just, like I said, it's not what we're doing and what we're not doing. It's how we're saying it and how we're presenting it. And in my opinion, I think that we are not crossing our T's and dotting our I's to the point where the, they understand and we understand that we're all doing everything that we're capable or that we can do. Um, and I'd like to bother John a little bit and ask him a few questions. Mm -hmm. okay, so I think, uh, I, th I think it's probably time to close. Let's get it on the books. As Sergio said, we can always, we can always revisit if we see something that, that we need to do. But now, at least now we have something on the books that's stronger. And, and, and it, delineates what we really don't want and what we do want. No, I think Sergio made a great point. I think it's a great point. Um, but I also want to respect Luciana's request for maybe another shot with John. And I don't want her to, I don't think it's fair to ask her to close the public hearing if she still has questions. So if there's still questions, let's just, let's 
take a breath again and, and see what, see if we can get them answered. Yeah, maybe we could come back in two weeks, the next meeting. And I, I'm fine with that, and I, I do agree with Sergio. You can mark that one down on your calendar. Yeah. All right, uh, so we'll make a motion to adjourn. Wait, I'm sorry. Go ahead. There's nothing to preclude her from discussing the motion. Right, but if there's changes then that she wants to make, or if there's changes that come up. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure we don't. I know, but again, this is like the word thing. It's not necessarily the change, <coughs> it's just really locking in the, their, word. the wording of how we, we're doing things. Yeah, like, but I just, I just think, though, that if you want to go speak with them, and I'm, and I'm happy to, I think, it's, I think you should if you have questions. Because, but I don't want to, I don't want to close the public hearing, and, and if, if there's things that you come stumble upon, then we should talk about it. Right. And I don't want to shut down the process before you get that opportunity. And, and just, to, just to clarify, if other things do come up around like the positioning of these, the solar panels and where they go, where they can't go, are those things in separate to this law or we would be That's able to- That's all site plan development, correct, John? The location is a site plan issue. Yeah. I, there may be certain you know, situations in which it might be wise to have some re legislation that control, yeah. controls that. But I, I, at present, right now, I can't think of that, what that would be. I'm not saying that there's not something out there that we may, you know, I just felt like if we did the two to five, we could also have a little bit more um, clarity on where you can put them and where you can't put them. But All right, so why don't, let's, I let's don't adjourn. I think, yeah, I'd I like think, to adjourn if that's I think okay. I'd like to needs, I think for, for to let her go understand a little bit more. And so I'll sit with you in it and we'll go through it again. Yeah, Adam, will you come too? Of course. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So we'll, let's let's make the motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, uh, any opposed? Opposed. Opposed. I think we should close. Okay. Motion passes. All right. We're going to go to resolution. Thank you, John. Great job as always. We're going to go to resolutions. Authorize supervisors to sign a license agreement with Carol's Kitchen, Inc., owner of a mobile food and refreshment truck, authorizing licensee to enter upon a portion of the town commuter parking lot adjacent to town hall for the purpose of conducting a mobile food and refreshment concession. We're going to authorize the comptroller to process the f a budget transfer. This is for the liability fund. Also, another budget transfer for Parks and Rec. Jimmy Moderano in the back. He gets to go more equipment. It's all about those mowers. <laughs> That's it. Uh, we're going to authorize Barton and LeJudas to perform a wetland confirmation for ROC Shrub Oak Associates, LLC. We'll approve a tax certiorari proceedings for parcel known as section 37.15, block 1, lot 71, 225, Veterans Road. We will also approve a tax certiorari proceeding for parcel known as section 48.15, block 1, lot 56.1, 56.2, 56.3, 56.4, 56.5. See, I did that. No, <laughs> 234 Croton Heights Road. Could you read, read the amounts? No, 226 <laughs> Croton Heights Road, uh, 1331 Hanover Street, 1349 Hanover Street, and 1367 Hanover right. Street. Uh, we are going to authorize the a marketing policy for the Community Housing Board. Uh, I just want to state that this uh, is part of our uh, partnership with Westchester County uh, in regards to the East of Hudson uh, funds. Uh, and now they, there is a policy uh, that ensures the town's affordable housing program units shall include the use of the County of Westchester's Home Seeker website. That's just uh, so that we can ensure that it's being widely marketed. Uh, exciting news for our Parks and Rec. We're going to award the bid for the reconstruction of the Railroad Park Basketball Court. Uh, this is uh, going to Peter J. Landy, Inc. Uh, and the total bid price of 55000 which you can see there. And we will also award bids for the provision of buses for the summer camp program and senior citizen travel trips for the Yorktown Parks and Rec Department. Uh, let's see. It's awarded to Royal Coach Lines, Inc. as the lowest responsible bidder. And we'll authorize the release of a performance bond for a stormwater permit. 
in the amount of $5,000 to Verum Management LLC. And we will also accept monthly reports from the finance department, receiver of taxes, and town clerk. You had one and I'm sorry? You had one handed to you before. Before I had Margaret? several handed to me, but let's take those. Well, wait, before you do that, just on uh, the buses, uh, be it further resolved that upon recommendation of the superintendent of parks and rec, uh, the bid for section two and four coach buses for travel camp. Oh, JTR. Uh, this is for JTR. Thank you. No problem. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And then we have personnel. I do read these, Jimmy, just so you know, especially yours. Uh, we have uh, four personnel resolutions. I came out of executive session. Be it resolved that Antonio Cambrari is hereby appointed temporary to the Silver Sur Civil Sur Service Title Senior Automotive Mechanic, Job Class Code 0484-02, within the Refuse and Recycling Department, effective April 11th. 2022 to be paid at the rate set forth in the Yorktown CSCA, CSCA salary schedule A, group 13, step 5, which is $79,556 annually. Be it resolved that Stephen J. Lennox Jr. of South Salem is hereby appointed temporary to the Civil Service Title Laborer, job class code 0425-05, to be paid from the Yorktown CSCA salary schedule A, group 5, step 1, which is $46,389 annually with benefits such as sick days, personal days, and floating holidays to follow the CSCA agreement. Be it resolved, contingent upon successful completion of a drug test. Be it resolved that Stephen J. Lennox Jr. will report to work at the Refuse and Recycling Department on April 11, 2022, and that this date will be used as the first day of appointment. And be it further resolved that this appointment is subject to a probationary period of not less than 12, nor more than 52 weeks, commencing on the first date of his appointment on April 11th. Be it resolved that Kayla Gusikoff of Millbrook, New York, is hereby appointed provisional to the Civil Service Title CAD slash GIS Technician Job Class Code 0418-01 to be paid from the Yorktown CSEA Salary Schedule A-1, Group 11, Step 1, which is $65,275 annually with benefits such as sick days, personal days, and floating holidays to follow the CSEA agreement. Be it resolved it's contingent upon successful completion of a drug test. And be it resolved that Kayla Gusikoff will report to work at the engineering department on April 11th, 2022. And this date will be used as the first date of appointment. Be it further resolved this appointment is subject to a probationary period of not less than 12, nor more than 52 weeks, commencing on the first date of appointment on April 11th. And be it resolved that Andrew Bergen is hereby appointed temporary to the civil service title Park Groundskeeper Job Class Code 0288-05 in the Parks and Rec Department, effective April 11th, 2022, to be paid from the Yorktown CSEA Salary Schedule A, Group 10, Step 1, which is $55,903 annually. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Is there any more business before the board? If not, then we will entertain a motion to adjourn. So motion moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, Yorktown.